Greg Willard. And Greg Willard will be tossing the ball up. And let's see who it belongs to. It belongs to Portland. Ron, I think we'll be able to tell a whole lot right from the first couple of minutes of this ball game as to what kind of game we can expect. Portland came out in game three just standing around, really was not effective and aggressive on either end of the floor. They will have to come out a lot better here. Well, they want Drexler coming out and doing some quick hitting stuff, but instead it's Duckworth getting the first quick hit with two. Scott Fitzsimmons, on the other hand, says, if you see Portland push us around physically underneath, outside, we're not going to win the basketball game. Portland, on the other hand, says we have to come out aggressively defensively. So Balos, who sees most of his playing time in the first half, this is the first Phoenix shot of the game. In case you're wondering, there is a haze. There's nothing wrong with your picture. Not sure if you can see it. They had indoor fireworks during the starting lineup introductions. And that is the haze you see. Percy takes it inside. Now look for... Look for Phoenix right now to try to get a shot for, for Lang, possible. There's Lang. Goes around corner. That was a mismatch. I'll tell you what, it's going to be important. It's going to be important for Lang to get going, and I think you'll see Phoenix continue to go to him. They normally won't run plays for Lang, but they will try to get him involved. He's had a terrible series so far. Well, now they're saying the basket does count by Andrew Lang. At first, at first, Hugh Hollins waved it off. He said it's good, so we're tied at two. And that's a mental basket right there for Lang. Jeff Hornacek told me he wants Andrew to get a couple of putbacks early out of the ball game to get his confidence back. First turnover is Perry covers up the passing lane, and here comes Johnson. They want him to push the ball. Drexler, uh, Hornacek, the ball is around Percy for the basket and the foul. Now, nice use of the screen on the weak side. Percy coming around late. Sabala saw him, fell in, and then curled right to the basket. Watch right here, Hornacek with the pass in. And you see the little lean in right there. He knew Kersey was coming for the block. Picks up the foul. Cedric Sabalos, Kersey got in foul trouble in game three. Had to sit down. Sabalos, who gets most of his playing time in the first half, says he has to make the most of it. He understands his role, and right now he understands he has three points. Well, he's played well for Phoenix, getting his first starts here late, and has started every game here in the playoffs. At least Kersey open for the jumper. Kersey, who's averaging 17 points a game in this series, 14 overall in the playoffs, pulled the Blazers within one. Hugh Hollins has a hold right off the bat. That'll go against the Blazers' Clyde Drexler, his first second team foul. Clyde obviously concerned with Jeff on a second. Jeff finally got going in game three, got some offense. They added a couple new plays, the Suns did, to get him open more screens along the baseline. I think the key for Hornacek, he didn't shoot a free throw in the first two games, which is amazing. Yes, it really is. But he doesn't take the ball to the basket a whole lot. Kevin Johnson bosses it away. Each team with a turnover, we've played two minutes. Suns lead it by one, five to four. Order of the pull-up, Jay, nothing but net. And he's the one, Jack, we saw just about a week ago last Tuesday, 14 first quarter points in game one. If he gets going, that'll present problems for Phoenix. Kevin Johnson backed off of him a lot in game one and allowed him to take that jump shot, trying to force him to beat him from the outside. Can't play soft, Savalos. Percy cuts off the baseline nicely. Savalos dribbles it out of bounds, second turnover. For Phoenix, who has had problems in this series, turning the ball over, 19 turnovers a game they are averaging against Portland. And they came into that series averaging just above 13 turnovers a game. Drexler gets away from Hornacek, the easy two points for Clyde, who anxiously awaits today's decision on whether or not he will make the Olympic team. Johnson to pull up Jay. Johnson, boy, when he's making that jump shot, he's uh, much more effective. Porter now has to come out and play him, and that gives him opportunities to get to the basket. Oh, oh what a move. Terry Porter gets his fourth point as Portland is now five of six from the floor. And they lead it by three. We have played three minutes in the first quarter. Lang brings Duckworth way out front. Underneath is Kevin Johnson all alone. They get the ball to him. He can't get it. The return, no. Drexler comes up with it. Portland has, has the numbers. KJ wanted the foul, and 
Good foul by Kersey. The Blazers had the numbers that time. Well, Porter has been all over the floor. You mentioned he had a real big first period in game one, and that got him started in this series. You see him taking the ball to the basket right there, and there is the foul as Kersey takes the ball to the basket. Well, Perry had to do that. Yeah, they had the numbers, and he knew they would get an easy two if he didn't commit the foul. Kersey, the big game two, foul trouble in game three. For the Portland Trailblazers, who are only shooting 74% from the line. Kersey, one of the many who are under 70%, he's at 68% from the strike. Sooner or later, that comes up to get you. Can't win a lot of games shooting under 75% from the free throw line, particularly here in the playoffs, because there are so many close games. Both teams hot right now early on. Perry Baxton Williams, the fall away Jay. Another guy that just went through the motions, I think, for Cotton Fitzsimmons and the Phoenix Suns in game one and game two, Tim Perry. Looking more for his offense. Buck Williams parks in the lane. No three seconds gone. Instead, he gets the basket for his first two of the ball game. And the Blazers again lead by four. Still would like to see a basket come from the inside with the Perry or Lane here. There's Lane inside. They, they, as I mentioned, they have to get this guy involved. They can't get zero points and zero rebounds from Lang and win in this series against Portland. Not only that, Lang and West. <laughs> and West also gets zero and zero. They combine for a giant over on Saturday. Over everything. Rebounds and points. With a chance of defense. Duckworth backs in. The right-handed hook won't go. Sabalas brings it out of the pack. Has Johnson on the right. Sabalos, good pass inside. That's nice handle of the fast break. To that selfish play, KJ with the pass. That is Phoenix basketball. They tie it at 13. Now Johnson not giving Porter any room. Very tight on Williams. Now the double team coming at Clyde Drexler as soon as he catches the ball on the low post. Beats everybody down for it. That's after a made basket. That's after a make. They got down that quickly. Sabalos was very active during warm-ups. He was bouncing around. You can tell he was lively tonight. Well, right, he's, he's getting the playing time. Uh, and he's loving it. Drexler averaging an even 30 for this series. Has four tonight. KJ again. You see how he pushes it up? He moves up Perry out of the way. He now has six. This is the way Portland came out defensively in game three. They have to be more aggressive. They have to step out and challenge people in the open floor. The basic give and go results in a Clyde Drexler basket and a foul. We've got 618 remaining in the first quarter, and the Blazers have a two-point advantage with Drexler going to the line. We have a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Why can't they just love us for our minds? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brew, not watered down, to drink light yet satisfy completely. In fact, refreshment like this is almost... first-time buyers can get up to $900 in additional savings on new Jeep Wranglers. Last week in Pittsburgh, the Bucks and the Braves battled to a standoff, so they're at it again. Champion against champion in one of the sharpest rivalries of the season, the Pirates and the Braves, live at 7.35 Eastern, Tuesday night on TBS. Tonight, TNT alters its programming to bring you a movie about the pain of prejudice and the price of violence. We urge you to watch Heat Wave. 
This program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the National Basketball Association solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. A lot of points being scored so far. 6.18 left. You saw your score there. Andrew Lang right here will get the pass going to the basket along the baseline. And I think it is so important for Phoenix to continue to look for him and for Lang to continue to go to the basket. Now look right here in game three. No points and no rebounds in 35 minutes from the center position. The amazing thing about that, Phoenix still won the game. I don't think they can win very often with, with no production out of their center spot. Here you see the series average of only one. 1.7 for the playoffs. He's better than four a contest. Both teams extremely hot so far. How about 82% and 73%? I'm going to go out on a limb and say it won't stay that way. Oh, probably not. You know, I talked to uh, Cotton about his center position and lack of production there, and of course, he's trying not to magnify the situation this time of the year, saying he doesn't look to get a lot of scoring from that position. But I said, Cotton, you got to get something there, and he said, exactly. yeah, you're right. If you expect to advance to the finals. Right. Lang looking for a shot, doesn't get it. Sabalos had the tip, it won't go. Portland quickly on the break. Porter for three, you can bank on that one. So the problem now is Porter once again has his confidence from the field. KJ keeps backing off, giving him that shot. And then KJ answers with a two. Porter though, now six of 12 in this series from the three-point arc. It's been a great matchup at the point guards. They have been going right at each other. Outside, and Kersey gets that going. Sabalos is going to have to pull up on him a little bit because Kersey now with five, and it's a five-point Blazer lead. Sabalos has it blocked by Kersey. Loose ball on the ground. Drexler comes out. He's got Marley. Takes it in strong with the right hand. Count the basket. Drexler goes down hard. What a move oh. by Clyde Drexler. And the crossover in the open floor. Watch, he gets Marley leaning in one direction, and he's already to the basket before Marley even gets turned around. Tim Perry tries to avoid the contact. But, boy, what about that basket going down? He shot that with the, with the left hand off the wrong foot going to the basket. As you mentioned, they're, they met today, we should say, in deciding who will be the extra member of the Olympic team to be added to, the, to that list. The general feeling is if Clyde Drexler doesn't get it, it'll be a major injustice, and it'll be a major PR problem. Yes. Well, I, I think it's a done deal. I think he's there. I don't see how he couldn't be. Marley outside. Ten on the shot clock, inside of five on the game clock. Perry posting up Williams. Shot clock at four, Williams takes it away. Perry commits the foul. That'll be his third personal foul. So that's, that's the kind of foul that causes Cotton Fitzsimmons to look forward more than he is to retirement. I mean, that play has, he first gives up the ball right there. Then he compounds the situation by reaching in and committing that foul. He had such a big game in game three. 27 points and nine rebounds, and now he has to spend the rest of the first half on the bench. The personal foul takes a big chunk out of Cotton Fitzsimmons' offense and defense. Williams, as Chambers has checked into the lineup, did not play the first half on Saturday. Percy, baseline, oh, into row Percy with seven points, and it's the biggest Blazer lead in his 10. This game going through the form of the previous three. Somebody gets a big lead in the first quarter. We have a push. Well, with Kersey making the shots from the outside and with Porter making the shots from the outside, that gives Clyde an opportunity to get down on the low post and work it. The forces are it allows Portland to spread their offense now because the outside shots are going and they can take advantage, better advantage of individual matchups right now. Well, Cotton Fitzsimmons going with a somewhat smaller lineup as he takes Sabalos out. He has Johnson, Marley, and Hornacek in. Lang and Chambers. As you mentioned, Chambers did not play in the first half of game three. A lot made out of it in the papers locally as he hits his first shot. And Chambers feels he's doing everything he should to be getting more playing time. Even sat out an entire game against San Antonio. Now, he's having a real difficult time, Ron, dealing with the, his diminished role here. Um, I can understand it as Porter makes yet another three-point shot. Tom 
Chambers just wants some minutes. Cotton wants some other guys, some younger guys, to be more involved. He's giving them time now. Well, Phoenix needs a 20-second timeout, but there's really not much defense with Portland shooting 87%. Yourself, you're shooting in the high 80s. And right now, Portland is incredibly hot. We talked about Tom Chambers, but you have to look at the stats on him. In this series, he's only shooting 38%. And that is what Cotton Fitzsimmons is basing his playing time on, I would have to believe. And Chambers is going to argue, you give me more time and allow me to be on the floor. And I'm going to be able to give you better production than that. Now, you see his numbers are down. Definitely, and I mentioned he's having a hard time dealing with the diminished role. He's having a little bit difficult time dealing with the other guys getting a lot of a lot of the publicity that he got his first couple of years here in Phoenix. I mean, you think when he first came over here from Seattle, he was the Phoenix Suns. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to give up that notoriety, that publicity that he learned to love. He set scoring time. records here his first two years. Right. It's an 11-point Blazer lead as we look at the points so far. The starting guards outside won't go. Lang went high for the rebound. The ball hit off the leg of Andrew Lang, and it belongs to Portland. We're going to keep an eye on that starting guard play. There's a little damp spot on the floor right in front of Portland's bench. Do a little homework on that. It's a good hustle, though, by Andrew Lang. Yeah, he's going to try to get to it here, and yes, it call. does hit Lang's knee. Lang didn't argue the call, although he tried to play official that time and pointed the other way. Good call by Greg Willard. They've cleaned up the floor, and we are set. 340 remaining in the first quarter. The Blazers lead it by 11. A.J. trying now to body up against Porter. Uh, he has it going now, though. He's going to continue to look for his shots. Duckworth bumping with Lang. Gets Lang up in the air, and Andrew Lang rejects it. Here come the Suns. Chambers to Marley. He looks for the three. He takes it, and he doesn't get it. Portland has it. But Andrew Lang is 14th block of the playoffs. And that's what Cotton wants out of that position, along with this, a little bit of scoring, is that big block. That'll give Duckworth something to think about. That's the thing with Lang. He's definitely not, has not been effective on the offensive end in this series. But he has played defense, and another three-point basket goes down to Portland. Well, Portland is now 15 of 18 from the floor, including three three-pointers. And they were only shooting 25% from three. Marley gets Drexler up in the air, and he's able to draw the whistle. Danny Ames will come into Portland's lineup. Ron, you look up at the scoreboard. Portland has 35 points already with 2.42 to go. Well, they're on pace to score over 40 points in this first period. Foul was on Robinson. It's a 14-point Blazer lead. Well, here it is, gentlemen. Top of the world. Now, I put my camera here. Your vehicle would face out over the cliffs. What do you think? Look, if you plan to claim your vehicle's as good as a Jeep, you really need this shot in your commercial. How are we going to get our vehicle up here? Helicopter. We'll lift it. Huh. Let's, Let's do it. Let's huh? do it. Huh? Great. Let's go down and make some calls. Same thing. It's going to be a great commercial. To unlock your body's potential, we proudly offer Solarflex. 32 old-fashioned iron pumping exercises, each correct in form and balance, all on a simple machine that fits in the corner of your home. For a free brochure, call anytime. The whole idea for the design behind Jeep Cherokee is to get you wherever you're going, safe and sound. Or if you prefer, safe and no sound. Now save $1,500 on new Jeep Cherokees. 21, the Blazers with their biggest lead of the ball game tomorrow night, beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Another doubleheader coming your way. The Knicks and the Bulls, what a series that has turned out to be. Followed by the Jazz and the Sonics coming your way on TNT.
How about Jeff Hornacek? We saw his numbers in the first two games. He was only 9 of 19. How about 0 for 1 tonight in the first quarter? Once again, Jack, can they win if he doesn't score points? I, I just don't think they can. They look for him for so much in the thing that it does for the Phoenix Suns when he is on. Everyone else seems to gain a lot of confidence from Jeff Hornacek. I mean, he is the guy on this team. He's going to have to at least get more shots than he's getting so far in this game. And I think you have to look right over there on the Portland team once again and give credit to Clyde Drexler. I mean, he has not allowed Hornacek to free up for a shot or for a drive to the basket. Well, he gets one of two. Portland guards, on the other hand, Drexler and Porter, have not missed a field goal. They are 9 of 9 from 23 points. Right now, they give Porter a little rest as Ames comes in. Tied at 17. Since then, Portland has gone on an 18 to 4 run. Finally, with the rebound, Kevin Johnson trying to push it up before Portland can set their defense. He should be able to take Ainge off the dribble. He sort of does. Goes down hard. Ainge with the foul, and that's something that KJ has not been able to do so far in this game. Break down the point guard defense and get to the paint area. Danny Ainge does get the push right here. You'll see him with both hands on, and KJ will get a couple free throws. Crowd wanted Golden, and thought Robinson got a little too close to the rim. I thought it was a good play. Johnson now with five as Enos Watley checks into the lineup. Kersey goes out. There's Kevin Johnson in this series. A big game, too, but as Rick Adelman said, he goes, if Jeff Hornacek and Kevin Johnson combine for 50 points and 20 assists, we'll have a hard time beating these guys. They don't need Kevin Johnson to score 35 points. They do not, and they definitely, the Phoenix Suns, don't need him with only five assists at games in. He needs to be at least... 12 to 15 assists for this team to be up and down the floor playing as well as they like to play on the offense and the floor. Ainge for three, and he buries it. Danny Ainge, who was 0 for 6 in this series from the arc, is now 1 of 7, and that is the fourth three-pointer for Portland tonight, and that has been the story here in the first quarter. I guess the thing Cotton is thinking over there on the bench is those shots cannot continue to fall the whole game, but he's going to have to do a better job defensively in the guard position. Marley with three, but the lead is still 12, and we have one and a half remaining in the first quarter. Great pass inside, Duckworth to Ainge. Suns get caught on a switch. The real thing right now, when you look at those 40 points by Portland, is that they have come from literally everywhere on the floor. I mean, not only from the outside, not only from the inside, a good mix offensively. Johnson takes Watley off. The basket won't go. Just Kersey blows the whistle. We have a foul. Oh, Watley with the push down low. KJ now trying to get something going offensively. He's, as I mentioned, has not been, been able to create KJ shots for his teammates. Really Watley's first personal foul. Kevin Johnson at one time in this series had a 21 straight free throw streak going. Had it broken in game three. But he started one up again tonight. Three of three from the line. How about that? He's only missed two the entire playoffs. He was 16 for 16 in game two. And he got those 35 points. He just whammied him. 13 point Portland lead nearing the one minute mark of the first quarter. And an exciting one it has been. But as quickly as Portland gets these big leads, we have seen them disappear. Whistle and a foul as Chambers trying to play catch up with Enos Watley. Picks up the foul. Chambers is going to have to be aggressive on the defensive end of the floor. That's the reason why his playing time according to. Cotton is, that's the reason his playing time has diminished as much as it has because he has not been as effective defensively. Here's one of the great stories in this NBA playoffs this year is the story of Enos Watley, who, who left after his sophomore season at Alabama, was a first-round pick of Kansas City, the 13th player chosen all chosen before, in fact, the player before Clyde Drexler had some alcohol and drug problems, straightened himself out. But he's very proud of the fact that he has been sober for five years. His wife is an ordained minister and gives much of the credit to his faith and his wife. And he's made it back after last year playing in the CBA Finals. Oh! Johnson, the shot won't go. We have a loose ball foul. 
And that'll be on Danny Ainge. That'll be Ainge's second personal foul. Andrew Lang will go to the line. Lang in the first period of this game has battered his numbers in all of game three when he was had no points and no rebounds. He did have three blocks in that game, and Cotton said as long as he remains active, as long as he continues to play defense, he will continue to go with it. Well, Terry Porter comes back in. Watley sits down. Steve Burt checks into the lineup for Phoenix. And Kevin Johnson sits down as we look at Andrew Lang, the fourth-year pro out of Arkansas, and one of the new daddies in the NBA, and a baby boy recently. Lang has six. The lead is still 13. We've got about a 16-second difference between the shot and the game. A lot of switching by Phoenix. That's good ball movement there, though. The shot didn't go. And the comes down with it. And Phoenix has the opportunity of holding it for the last shot because there's only about an eight-tenth of a second difference between the shot and the game clock. Steve Burt running the show was in the CBA to start the year. Oklahoma City. Clearing out the middle. Looks for the shot. He's got it. Doesn't get it. And as the horn sounds, nobody will get a final shot off. But we have played a very exciting 12 minutes from the Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Phoenix. And the Blazers will go to quarter number two with a 13-point advantage. She saw. Oh, dear. Murder she traced. Miss Marple, whatever it is, no, no, no. It was murder, she said. Tonight on TNT. I would recommend to the average car owner that they change their oil every 3,000 miles. The cheapest insurance that you will ever buy for the life of your car is to keep your engine oil changed. I would recommend Pennzoil because Pennzoil outperforms any leading motor oil against viscosity breakdown. You can't afford it. You can't afford to have the wrong product in your engine. Pennzoil, performance, protection, quality. That's what Pennzoil means to me. Want to run your windowing software fast? Then you need a real power source inside. A source that can generate the power your software needs. The affordable Intel 486. Power it up and run your software at light speed. Intel, the computer inside. This close to the thrill of real life on the Discovery Channel. It's your world. The Beastmaster. Wednesday on TNT. of the sun and we are inside of the Veterans Memorial Coliseum where the Blazers have a 13 point advantage in a game in which they control thanks to their guards Clyde Drexler and Terry Porter. Look at those numbers pretty impressive they have yet to miss a field goal attempt. attempt. A lot of those coming from behind the three point line and uh, just checking my notes here a new career playoff high for a quarter for Portland 42 points on the scoreboard they had 41 against San Antonio back in 1990, so the 42 points on the scoreboard for the Blazers, a new playoff high. We mentioned it before, worth mentioning again, this is the way this series has gone. The big lead, it dissipates, ends up in a close game. Chambers, the acrobatic shot, and he has his second field goal. I think one of the keys for Portland right now, Jack, is the fact the crowd is not into this yeah. ball game. I mean, we talked about how loud they were. They, they really haven't gotten into it yet. One thing Rick Adelman did say about this crowd was that it was important for Portland to keep them out of it, and they have done that. Age all the way to the hole. That's 
doesn't get the bounce. Rebound, Chambers has it. Still, the penetration by Ames, they let him get so deep into the paint. Hornacek to Bird, takes it up, doesn't get it. But we have a foul. I also find it ironic that coaches say what crowd, then the next, the next breath they say, well, we got to keep, we gotta gotta keep him out of it. <laughs> All right. All right. You'll see uh, Jeff with the penetration gets his shot for Burt as he goes to the basket there. And Burt does pick up the foul, a late whistle. Porter upset that there was not an offensive foul called on the screen that knocked him to the floor on the outside by Lang. Percy's second personal foul, and Steve Bird, who was 5 of 6 from the line in Game 3, very important free throws, out of Iona, has seen action everywhere in the world, overseas, says he owes everything to Cotton Fitzsimmons for taking a chance on him. Uh, he's uh, once again proven Cotton a pretty smart guy because he has stepped up and has performed very well. Now, Robinson and Chambers battling underneath. And Robinson takes it strong. Now that's nice defense by Chambers. I don't think Cotton would be upset with that effort. He had the hand in the face. Robinson just makes a big basket. Now Chambers counts the basket. I think it's important to note here how quickly Phoenix is getting up, getting the ball up the floor right now after made baskets. They know they have to do that to be effective, and that is the only way they're going to get back in this game is to keep the tempo up to their liking. Do you think Mr. Chambers is trying to prove something? Well, Tom, you know, he said, if, if Tom comes out and has a big game here, I'll be the happiest guy in this building, happiest guy in Phoenix, because I'm interested in winning. But I have to do what's best for the team, and he feels like some of the young guys had been playing more aggressively. We've got a whistle and a hold. Steve Burton grabbed a hold of someone. That'll be Burt, Burt's first personal foul. Ain John Horn is set. Porter to quick turnaround over Burt. And Terry Porter remains perfect. He has 11 for the ball game. The lead is back to 10. Hornacek outside, still not a very good look. Robinson from 20, Man. nothing but net. That's just good shooting there. I mean, that is good shooting. You have Robinson at 16, coming out, taking the jump shots with a hand in his face. 20 for 26, the Blazers are right now. Mullen just refuses to let Phoenix get any consistent offense going early. Bird, good dish off to Andrew Lang, who tries to take down their shot clock. Lang with eight. It's nice to see a guy break out of a slump this time of the year. He had been struggling. Stay tough. Percy from outside doesn't get it. Burt with the rebound. He has Marley on the right. Chambers on the left. Good pass inside the nice. Thundering Dan, blocked by Robinson. His third of the playoffs. And Porter on the floor once again <laughs> saying to the officials, what must I do to pick up a charge? You'll see Burt get just a little bit out of control here. Changes up his mind. Porter with maybe a little flop, but Robinson right back with a nice defensive play. And Porter still talking to Jess Kersen. And I think, uh, I think Jeff Hornacek may be bleeding. And the NBA rule, if you bleed, you've got to be taken out of the game until it stops. And I think that's probably the case. Because Jeff Kersey saw it and quickly grabbed Jeff Hornacek's arm and let him off to the side. And that brings Kevin Johnson back into the lineup. And Joe Prosky's going to have to do, do a little Marcus Welby action on Jeff Hornacek. Uh, they're not many better than Joe Prosky. He's been around a long time. He's gone through more hair news. <laughs> Inside, Tom Chambers draws the foul, but once again, Chambers very aggressive offensively. Yes, he's looking for, for his offense, and you mentioned he might be trying to make a statement to the coaching staff over there, telling them that he does not indeed deserve more playing time than he's gotten here in the playoffs. I just don't think Phoenix can win without him being effective. They need his experience on the floor. They need his offensive potential on the floor, but he can't be a liability on the defensive end. Of tonight's game, Jack and I will be selecting our Budweiser player of the game. 
Hornacek getting the right elbow worked on. That's where the cut was. Well, that's the last thing Jeff uh, wanted to do right now, I'm sure, is leave the game. He is, has yet to score a point. 0 for 2. He's had only two field goals. Crowd chanting defense. Their troops are within eight. Nearing nine minutes in the second quarter. Well, that's gets away from Burke. Good offensive set right there. Porter misses his first shot, but he got a nice screen along the baseline. He's wide open. Marley strong to the hole. The off-balance shot will go. He had the right idea. The other way, Kersey. Connects. You've got to get back defensively on Portland. They make you pay for a miss. If you don't get to the offensive board, you definitely must get back. But that's true with both teams. They both like to run. Feel they are best playing that style. Marley looks at the three. To Chambers with the right hand from the left side. Now he's, he's throwing it right now. He's looking for the shots, and his teammates right now are looking for him. Well, we got here about two hours prior to game time, and Chambers was out here shooting. One of the first players out. It's paid off. He's 4 of 4 from the floor. Right into the hands of Robinson. The basket goes and the foul. Let's go Bill Fulton hunting with him. <laughs> Kevin Johnson has a chance to pick up the loose ball. And he knocks it instead into congestion. Robinson picks it up, and you see he acted as if he knew that one was going to go as soon as it left his hand. Now, I'm not <laughs> yeah, so sure. Right. <laughs> Foul was on uh, Chambers. That's his second. Tim Perry already is over on the Phoenix bench with three personal fouls, so if Chambers gets one more, both small forwards now will be over there with three. Now Drexler guarding Marley as Johnson works on Kersey. Chambers left open for a 17, and he's got it. Chambers with 13 points, 11 coming in this quarter, and the lead is down to nine. He is five of five now from the floor. Phoenix has to come up with some stops here. He can't continue to cha change baskets. That's not a good shot there, but it goes. Well, and that's the kind of half yeah. it's been. Well, Rick, Rick Adelman said that uh, they've got to show patience. They can't take one pass and shoot like Phoenix just did. Williams has it. That'll be a loose ball foul, and it will be on Kevin Johnson. His first. That will be the third team foul. Yeah, I saw uh, Rick's reaction, Rick Adelman's reaction, and he's going to call a timeout after Kersey put that shot up, and he didn't like it until it went down. Blazers lead it by 11, and we'll be back to Phoenix in a moment. Four trucks, the best ever has. When we made the best-built, best-selling Ford full-size pickup more stylish, we also made it a more comfortable place for people. Club Wagon's been totally redesigned around people. And only Ford offers drivers airbags in both mini and full-size vans. Ford redefined the word truck, but we didn't forget who made us number one. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. The true joys in life are not found in the empty pursuit of pleasure, but in the accomplishments realized through one's own hard labor. For nothing satisfies the soul so much as honest toil and seeing through a job well done. Of course, having a whole bunch of money's not too bad either. A pat on the back for Adams Tractor Company, winners of the Ford New Holland Service Excellence Award, providing the Columbia Basin with the very best in farm equipment. Adams proudly sells and services Ford equipment, number one in quality, tough and reliable. That's Ford. Adams Tractor Company, bringing you the best from our award-winning service department. Our expanded parts department will have what you need when you need it. Adams Tractor Company, the Columbia Basin's best. Portland's biggest lead was 14, and right now it is an 11 at 55-44, 7.29 of the first quarter is... Portland had their highest scoring quarter in playoff history in quarter number one as they notched up 42 points, but Tom Chambers has kept him in the game this evening. 13 points tonight, already over his playoff average of 12. 
And I would say Tom will play the remainder of this second period if he stays out of foul trouble, any more foul trouble. He has two personal fouls right now. You see the shooting there. Both teams still shooting very well. Not much bench play from either team. Drexler and Porter back at the guards for the Blazers. They have only one turnover on offense. We'll give and go to oh, Kersey. Man. Count the basket to Robinson. Count the basket and the foul. Everybody saw that except Phoenix. And, and you hear all the time about Portland having great athletes. And I think on this play, you see it as well as on any I've seen in this game. Now watch the pass to Ford. Excuse me, the Drexler on the low post. Now this is a tough angle pass. And it's... And Robinson catches it going away from the basket. And he makes it look easy. Now that's... Athleticism right there. I mean, that is a heck of a play. And that was Tom Chambers' cover, too. 14-point matches the biggest lead for Portland. And Neely up off the bench very quickly. We'll have to see now if he's Andrew. coming in for Chambers. Andrew Lang is fouled by Kersey, and that'll be his third personal foul. Now Rick Adelman quickly goes to his bench, and Kevin Duckworth will have to come back into the lineup. Neely, I guess, will come in for Lang because he's not going to end it right now. Lang on the free throw line. And Lang has played all the way, so he probably could use a minute or two. His minutes have been down in the playoffs because of his lack of production. Lang now two of three from the line. He has eight points. Duckworth in. Kersey sits down with three personal fouls. Duckworth with four points already this evening. He has two rebounds to go along with that. Five with one of two, and with 7-0-1 remaining in the half, the Blazers' lead is down to 13. Phoenix did not lose many games here at home this year. 36-5 and in the Coliseum. Second best, and a little give and go. Kevin Johnson batted his, at himself as Porter gets away for his 13th point. Well, Kessler now with seven assists, and so with uh, Porter also seven assists. But, or, yeah, that's great use of the screen, though, out front. No communication by uh, the Phoenix Suns there. What you're seeing from Phoenix on that play, at least, is Ed Neely comes into the lineup, and Andrew Lang will sit down. Neely, the ninth-year abroad of Kansas State, is we're seeing Kevin Johnson taking it in and not dishing it off, trying to score the basket. Right, and that's what he did in game two. He scored a lot of points. He had only five assists, though, and his team lost the game. You saw Lang go to the bench. I thought it was real nice that Phoenix got some, him involved. Offensively got some shots for him. Made him a part of their offensive scheme. The lead is down to 13. Robinson left inside, runs over Neely, and that will be an offensive foul on Cliff Robinson, his third personal foul. Now Robinson uh, got Marley in the cheek with a, an elbow as he went to the basket. Incident contact, nothing intentional, but he did get Marley right with Joe. Now Rick Adelman must make a decision if you had Robinson with three, Percy with three. Let's see if they take it on Robinson. Hornacek has it rejected right into the hands of Miguel Knight, who's injured and not playing in this series for Phoenix. Agent Robinson has to come out. So now it'll be Clyde Drexler moving to the small forward. Porter and Ainge will play the backcourt. This is an interesting lineup for the Blazers. This is a lineup Rick Adelman really doesn't like. He thinks Clyde can get in foul trouble out there playing the small forward. Continues to look for his offense. He continues to work for the open shots. He's the only offense right now for the Suns. That's all. Drexler, they give him the three. He takes it. Williams with the offensive rebound, and Kevin Johnson knocks it out. And they say it belongs to Phoenix. No, I think Jess Percy's saying, no, no, I made a mistake. Uh, the crowd's going to yeah. boo just a little bit, but they no, know, know. that that's yeah. a proper call. That was an oops. <laughs> Drexler and Porter together, 26 points on 11 of 13 shooting, 14 assists. And we talked about Phoenix's guard play at the top of the show. And that'll be an offensive foul on like Kevin Duckworth on the pick. That'll be his second. Watch the screen as Duckworth comes in to try to knock off Kevin Johnson there. You saw the body contact, the movement as the contact was made. Little elbow inside, Phoenix regains control, 17. 
on the shot clock. Well, Phoenix trying so hard, Kevin Johnson in particular, to get to the paint to try to find some shots for his teammates. But I tell you what, the Portland guards are doing such a good job of not allowing him to pe penetrate, break that defense down. Chambers, short, age boxes out Marley, gives down with the rebound. During the five-minute mark of the second quarter, the Blazers by 11. We've got a whistle and a foul, and that will be a Kevin Johnson. This second. And that's, that's another thing, Ron. Porter has been so effective offensively in this game to this point that Kevin Johnson has to be so concerned with him while he's on defense that Kevin really hasn't had a chance to think a whole lot about what he's going to do on the offensive end of the floor. Coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report, Ernie Johnson in our studios in Atlanta. And he'll have a little uh, highlight of NBA News of the Hall of Fame inductees, the weekend's bigger moments, and a closer look at Steve Burt of the Phoenix Suns all coming up with EJ at the half. Porter has them both. He has 15 here in the first half, six coming in the second quarter. Neely sets a pick on Porter. Johnson has just a little bit of daylight, but he doesn't get it. The return, he's got it. And the foul. Oh, and that, that's just good second effort that time. I know KJ is frustrated or has been in this game because he's not been able to do this. Watch, he does give, hesitate just enough to freeze up Duckworth. And then Duckworth misses the free throw. KJ with the nice second effort, and he gets a free throw because of that effort. And he's three of five from the line. We talked about how he's only missed two in the playoffs. Coming into tonight, now he's up to four. But the lead is 11. Down low to Duckworth, Chambers on him. They'll give Duckworth that shot. They like to put a body on him. They like to allow him to have that. You won't see them double teaming Duckworth. Johnson on Porter, a little behind the back. Baseline fall away. Follow by Andy Lee. Oh, that's Neely's first two-point basket in the playoffs. Every shot he's made has come from behind the three-point line. Here comes the crowd. Four of ten before that shot. The first time we have heard the 14,000. To Marley, he's got Porter to beat. And Danny A's a good defensive play. To Drexler, to the hole. That'll quiet him. Great defensive conversion that time. Portland just simply would not let Phoenix score an easy basket. Now, Ala Abdullami up off Portland's bench. She has not seen action in this series. Oh, that's it's, it's his first good look. First time we've seen that. First time we've seen the penetration and KJ finding Hornacek. He's one of four from the field. Only four shot attempts with three minutes and 30 seconds left. And the crowd again standing. You see Duckworth sitting down. Abdelnabi will give them, give them a little bit more quickness along the front line. Al Abdelnabi, the second year pro out of Duke. Inside, Williams, the off-balance right-handed shot will go. Johnson out of the pack. He had Chambers spotting up in the corner. Marley for three, doesn't get it. Chambers wanted the ball in the far corner and probably should have had it. He was there open, but Phoenix got a good shot. The way Marley has been shooting the three-point shot here in the playoffs. That's a good shot. Hornacek gets a hand on Clyde Drexler. That'll be Jeff Hornacek's first personal foul. We have a timeout, 2.45 left in the half, a nine-point Portland lead. It's the first week of spring training, and a bunch of nice old ladies show up. Say cheese. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice, until we started working out. You call that exercising? Hey, Grandma, I don't see you doing it. <gasps> Oh! We finished 
Jesus. In your dreams, homeboy. Finally. Cold butts for everybody. Adam boy. Everybody hates to eat and run. We'd rather take it slow. But the way this life is going, gotta grab your food and go. And with all that running round, catches up with you at last. Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. For acid indigestion or heartburn with headache, nothing's faster or more effective than Alka-Seltzer. Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. Introducing Ford's newest car. It doesn't have a sticker price. There's no choice of colors. And it has to be driven four times the speed limit to be appreciated. The new Ford IndyCar. If you think our technology looks impressive here, just wait till you experience it down the road. Have you driven a Ford lately? Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Phoenix, where the Portland Trail Blazers and the Phoenix Suns in game four of their best of seven series. The Blazers have led by as many as 15. Phoenix has been able to cut into it, but right now with 2.45 left to be played, the Blazers lead it by nine. Along with Jack Gibbons, I'm Rob Doolin. As we look at Rick Adelman talking to Allah Abdul Nabi, as Portland in some foul trouble, as Robinson now with three, Ainge with two, Duckworth with two, and Kersey with three. The reason Abdenabi's on the floor, though, is that Phoenix has gone to the small lineup. Duckworth was having a difficult time guarding Chambers, and Rick Adelman is hoping Abdenabi will do a little bit better job of cutting off Chambers going to the basket. The crowd standing as Clyde Drexler comes to the line, and that's the starting guard for the respective teams. He doesn't get it. Duckworth on the bench. This crowd has been wanting to be a factor, haven't they? They have been wanting to get involved, and just here recently have they been able to get loud. Drexler with 16 points, only three in this quarter. Whistle, a foul, that'll be an on the lobby. KJ is now splitting that double team. The pick and roll, they're trying to set up for the pick and roll. Abdenabi stepping out, allowing him to get through the defense, and he's been able to create some shots that way. Kevin Johnson steps to the line. Three of five from the strike. Nine points to go along with seven assists. Five boards. It's time for stops in the last two and a half for Phoenix. They want to try to eat into that lead. They can't exchange baskets. Hornacek moves out on Drexler, off the lobby, on Chambers. Shot clock inside of 10. Drexler to Ainge for the three. He doesn't get it. Chambers tries to battle. Loose ball foul. That will be an ala of the lobby. And, and that's what they want from Chambers right there. A good job of putting his body on Abdenabi to keep him away from the ball. This is just fundamental basketball. Good job by Marley giving, putting the hand in the face. Now look at Chambers. He just bodies up knowing that Abdenabi is a better jumper, a better athlete, and keeps him away from the ball. Chambers with 15 tonight. 13 coming in the second quarter. Perfect from the strike. Chambers Duckworth will come back in. Chambers has given him a lot of minutes. Don't be surprised to see him start the third quarter. Cotton Fitzsimmons will take advantage of him while he has it going, while he's involved in the game and effective. Numbers out of Chambers, the 11th year pro out of Utah, was the 8th pick overall in the draft of 81 by San Diego. His playoff high is 19 this season. And he has 17 already. A little pressure put on by Phoenix. They back off. Neely comes over for the double team. Crowd on their feet. This is the closest Phoenix has been in a long time. And now we have the whistle, just Percy giving a warning. 
I think it's Ed Neely. He told Ed Neely to stop the pushing. He whistled the foul, gave Neely a quick 30-second Ward Cleaver kind of lecture. Uh, what he said was, I'm calling the first foul. He said, you got him first, cut it out, let's get on and play basketball. Yes, Buck Williams did give him a forearm to the chest, but that was after Neely grabbed his arm. We saw what Buck Williams did to Andrew Lang in game one, where he baited Lang into a technical foul, and Williams pushed first, Lang pushed second, and got picked up for the tee and the foul. Neely's been around too long for that to happen to him. Four for Williams, the lead is back up to eight inside of two minutes. Neely's never been one, though, to back down from any kind. No, no, you know that. He likes the hard fouls and the three-pointers. Marley with the rebound has been quiet. Hortisek, the look, the shot won't go. And Neely about takes Buck Williams' head off. <laughs> and that will be his second personal foul. But Big Ed got an arm around Buck Williams. <laughs> I thought we were going to see a little decapitation there. Boy, it looked like it. Jeff Hornacek, though, I think we need to talk about him. You'll see uh, the foul on Neely right here as he goes for the loose ball and definitely gets bucked. Jeff now rushing his shots, Ron, because he hasn't had many shot opportunities. Only one of five here in this period, in this half. So when he does get the shot opportunities, he's having to release it very quickly because he's not had real clear looks at the basket. And the numbers, they tell the story. Williams gets them both. He's four of four from the line. He has six. And Portland has missed only two free throws the entire game. Johnson. Ames tries to cover him. Neely fakes the three with the left hand. Uh, tough to miss those kind because you haven't had many that wide open going to the basket. Duckworth from the right side doesn't get it. Drexler flying in. Can't complete the putback. Uh, did you see how long he stayed up in the air? <laughs> Just glided through the air. Johnson way off the mark. The rebound. The putback. Harley. Harley with only seven points. But the lead is eight inside of one minute. Uh, you want to keep this crowd involved. You want to try to get a stop here and have some momentum coming out after the break. Neely got a piece of it. Portland retains possession with 11 on the shot clock. 49.2 on the game clock. Rick Adelman, who said to us today, whoever wins this series needs something from the bench. Right now, Danny Ainge, the only bench player on the court for Portland. Porter launches up the three, short, hits the shot clock, Phoenix will have it, with that's 43 on the game clock. That's what they needed, Ron, they needed to stop, Chambers will try to get back in, doesn't get to the table in time, yes, they might let him in now, try to get some offense, West will sit down, so West, who snuck into the ball game, will sneak out, Chambers comes back in, he's been the offense for, Port or for Phoenix in this first 24 minutes, 17 points for Tom Chambers. Kevin Johnson and Jess Kersey discussing, obviously, getting hacked yeah. after that. Yeah, Kevin thought he was fouled the last two times down on his shot. Johnson, no foul there. Well, he had his momentum that time, and he throws Terry Porter with just a little hesitation. 13 points for Johnson. They are standing again. Drexler works his way. He draws the foul with 24 even remaining on the game clock. And I knew Neely would be upset with that call because I sure Neely thought he had pretty good position as Clyde Drexler jumped in to make sure there was contact. That is his third personal foul. Now you'll see it right here. And you'll see Neely in pretty good position, I think. Maybe a little movement as contact is made. Clyde Drexler missed a couple of big free throws in game one. Now four of five from the line. He has 17 points. Well, as big a game as he had in game three against the Lakers in Los Angeles. The thing that you remember the most of that is the free throw that he missed in overtime right. that uh, caused not 
caused Portland to lose that game, but definitely gave the Lakers an advantage there. Phoenix with the last shot of the half. They've trailed by as many as 15. They were down by 13 at the end of one, the final 10 seconds of the second. They clear it out for Johnson. Chambers, a good move by Cotton to get him back in there. Big move by Cotton Fitzsimmons. Chambers now 7 of 8. Ainge will have a look at it. He lets it go at the buzzer, uh, and it goes for 3. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Any way you look at it, Cotton Fitzsimmons is upset. Ainge with the big shot. Boy, oh, just a bigger move by the Portland coaching staff, Rick Adelman, to make sure his one of his best three-point shooters was on the floor. Great look at the basket. Once again, it's not the clock, it's the horn, and he got it off before the horn. And that sends the Blazers to the locker room with a nine-point advantage. Stay with it. The potential halftime report is next. The 1992 NBA Playoffs are brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Coca-Cola Classic. You can't beat the real thing. When redesigning the Ford Taurus wagon, we gave it the kind of shape that holds your attention. Available anti-lock brakes that hold on slick roads. And a newly restyled instrument panel that holds more than convenient controls. Available dual airbags, a Ford Motor Company exclusive in this class. Because we know Ford Taurus wagon will also be holding you. Have you driven? So our lab guys wanted me to explain the advanced formula in new Rain Dance car polish. I told them, hey, forget that. Just show how easy it is to wipe off. They said no. They'd rather show how new Rain Dance lasts longer than those once-a-year polishes. Something about this special ingredient makes water beat up better longer. I said, nah, show the car. They said no, maybe the bottle. I said car. They said bottle. New Rain Dance. Hey, you can't argue with science. You'll find advanced formula Rain Dance at these fine stores. Good. Well, you're stuck here. Oh, man, where we going? How we going to get out of here, man? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Sound like it. Isn't that? Sure looks like it. That's that new KFC Honey Barbecue Chicken. New KFC Honey Barbecue Fried Chicken in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. Come see Hammer in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. Bernie Johnson in Atlanta. Coming up next, it's the Prudential Halftime Report Playoff Edition. I'll have the day's hoop news. The Hall of Fame gets nine new members. We'll take a look at the big moments of the weekend as we look ahead to our Tuesday night doubleheader, the Knicks and Bulls and the Jazz and Sonics. And Paul Rodden has the story of the Suns' well-traveled Steve Burt. In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanation. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick, anything less would be uncivilized. We were all tied up on the Delacour case, unable to identify the mystery block. Luckily, Louie was back. A Freedom Zoom kit. With Minolta's unique eye start, Freedom starts zooming before it even meets your eye. So, when you can't get to the picture, Freedom zooms the picture to you. And fast. Shoot! Look at this. It's our secretary. Looks like she takes more than dictation. Americans choose the freedom to zoom. Only from the mind of Minolta. If only your tires could talk. It's so tiring. He babies the car, then abuses me with messy vinyl cleaner. Hey, I'm rubber. Mm, no touch tire care. Ooh, nice foam. No touch tire care. The first product to clean, shine, and protect tires in one easy step. No scrubbing, no dirty rags, no mess. Yeah, clean and shiny. Oh, no, bad doggy. Go away. Treat your tires right with no touch tire care. What is self-esteem? Self-esteem to me is believing in yourself, it's being proud of who you are. Self-esteem is what you see in the mirror. If you see a bright student, then you can be a bright student. I feel good. 
You've got to have a high self-esteem because if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? Take pride in yourself. Stay in school. It's your best move. The Prudential Halftime Report is brought to you by The Prudential. In a changing world, one thing remains rock solid. The Prudential. On this Monday night, it's the only playoff show in town. Look at the first half of the Blazers, 74 points. They lead Phoenix by nine in game four of their Western Conference semifinal. Ernie Johnson in Atlanta with the Prudential Halftime Report. Before we take a look at some of the memorable moments of this past weekend's playoff action, let's hit the news wire. An announcement is expected tomorrow as to which players will get the last two spots on the U.S. Olympic team for Barcelona. The front runners at this point, Clyde Drexler of Portland and Christian Leitner of Duke, who would be the sole collegiate representative on that that U.S. squad. Congratulations are in order tonight for nine new members of the Basketball Hall of Fame. Lucia Harris, who led Delta State to three NCAA titles, and Nara Dyson, who led her AAU team to ten national titles, are the first women players inducted. They're joined by NBA legends Connie Hawkins and Bob Lanier and longtime Soviet star Sergei Belov. And in the coaching ranks, Luke Karnaseka, Al McGuire, Jack Ramsey, and the late Phil Wolpert. Well, tomorrow night here on TNT, it is a playoff doubleheader. Knicks and Bulls, Jazz and Sonics. As we look ahead to those games, we look back at some of the big moments of this past weekend. Among the big moments was this unexpected moment at the Garden Saturday. Michael with a clang job on a wide open jam. Still his 32 led the Bulls win. On Sunday, the Knicks came back to win despite Pat Ewing's foul trouble. But while he was confined to the bench, Bulls head coach Phil Jackson was ordered to leave it. Dick Bavetta teed him up. That second one late in the third put Jackson in the locker room for the fourth period. Now, despite a 26-point effort in Game 3, Scottie Pippen's game has had some rough edges against the Knicks. His production compared with the Miami sweep, way down. 24 a game against the Heat, 16.8 against the Knicks, and his field goal percentage way down. Meantime, the Knicks have gotten contributions from Ewing, X-Men, and Gerald Wilkins to even things up at 2. I've always felt that the fifth game, when it's even, is a, is a big-time pressure game for the home team. You know, I mean, I've always, I hated fifth games when it was tied 2-2, two to two, but, uh, you know, they're a championship team. They've been there before, but we have an opportunity. Yeah, some mind games being played there. The Jazz and Sonics, Sean Kemp, after being poked in the eye in Game 2, scored 8 and had a personal playoff low in rebounds with 6. Benoit Benjamin was the story of Game 3, assigned to check the mailman in the fourth quarter. He came through in a big way. Carl Malone was shut out in the fourth quarter as the Sonics won behind the marksmanship of veteran Ricky Pierce. He lit it up for 31, a real bust-out game for him after only averaging about 12 in the first two games against Utah. Sonics now have cut the gap to 2-1. to one. Both series resume tomorrow night on TNT. You'll see the Knicks and Bulls game 5 from Chicago Stadium, followed by the Jazz and Sonics game 4 from Seattle. And when the Prudential Halftime Report continues, Paul Ryden reports on a guy who has logged a lot of miles to reach the NBA playoffs. Steve Burt's story is next. constant change, there is one certainty, the financial strength of the rock, the prudential rock solid. At the break in Phoenix, the Suns and Blazers in Game 4 of their Western Conference semifinal as the Prudential Halftime Report continues. On any given playoff night, Steve Burt will come off the Phoenix Suns bench and play 10, 15 minutes. He'll score seven points a night. Hardly the kind of numbers that jump off the stat sheet and grab your attention, but Steve Burt's story will. Here's Paul Ryden. If you stitch together every basketball jersey that Steve Burt has slipped on in the last eight years, you'd have a ready-to-wear gazetteer of the world. Since leaving Iona in 1984, Burt has stopped at Golden State of the NBA, Albany of the CBA twice, Savannah, Georgia, back to the NBA with the Clippers, France, the Philippines, and Oklahoma City, not to mention those offbeat leagues at Long Island, New Jersey, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. And on February 14th, he landed in Phoenix, the promised land. Steve Burt! I was stunned. I mean, I was stunned for like three days. You know, I was, I was, I couldn't even play, but I, I think I shot like four for 20 that game, something like that. Because I was thinking like, God, this has been so long, and now finally it's here. 
After his living lesson in geography and perseverance, no land can be considered promised to this guy. But so far, his performance has earned him quality minutes off the bench and even an occasional start. It's all part of the education of Steve Burt. No situation too small, no obstacle too great from which to learn something. In Albany, for instance, he learned that he... Thought I was better than I was. At Long Island, he found out... I was nobody. And in virtually every new port, he was given... Another chance. But those nomadic days of wandering with his gaze fixed on the NBA were frustrating. Exasperated, not wanting to become another jobless jock without a future, Steve finally just dropped out of basketball and into a master's program. For two years, I couldn't watch, I couldn't watch basketball. I didn't want to look at it. I played a little bit, but I didn't really want to play that much. Uh, I went to grad school, and the whole time in grad school, I'm working on a computer, and I'm thinking jump shots and behind-the-back passes and everything. So back he went. Earlier this year, he made an appearance in the CBA All-Star Game, and a month later, he was back in the NBA. The news from his CBA coach sent him from Oklahoma City dribbling on air. I was like, my heart just started beating real fast, and I, I got really excited, and I was like, come on, stop playing. You know, don't play. You know this is what I wanted. He was like, no, really, man. He gave me a hug and everything, and he said, you know, I'm glad for you, man. He said, go up there and, you know, don't come back. Think of all the places Steve has played, if you can count that high, from the Philippines to Phoenix, and think of them as bricks being laid on a foundation. And remember, whether you're building on the foundation of a career or a brand new arena, you need patience and a plan. I remember each place. Basket. But that's one of the few times that that happens. And uh, there's the penetration, the help, and then back out to Hornacek. They're going to have to do that more often to get him more shots at the basket. We talked about the guard play that Rick Adelman said we have to control the backcourt of Phoenix. They have done just that. Only 13 assists to go along with 15 points. Once again, the magic number, so to speak, is 50 points and 20 assists between those two players. And then if you look at the backcourt of Portland, you'll see uh, Terry Porter right here. He's going to dribble up, finally give the ball to Drexler over here. Then uh, Robinson will set the screen, and instead of Marley getting over to cut off his path to the basket, he's going to just fake, go towards the basket, and the lob is going to come over top. Porter is going to get to the easy way, and uh, this guy's been effective everywhere. Watch right here. Here comes the pass and the screen. Marley, instead of stepping out to cut it off, jumps to the other side, and that leads to the easy two. I'll tell you what, Ron, with this telestrator, I'm going to say something I never thought I'd hear myself saying after playing a couple years for Hubie Brown. I kind of felt like Hubie. <laughs> that is using the telestrator. He, he's in New Jersey right now saying, yeah, right, Jack. Uh, and, and Hubie right now is thinking about pulling me out of the game. That's right. Drexler with 18, Porter with 15. And that you talk about the ineffectiveness of the Phoenix backcourt, and that's the effectiveness of Portland's backcourt. Terry Porter, 15 points in that quarter. Clyde Drexler led Portland with 18. Tom Chambers led Phoenix with 19. Kevin Johnson had 13. KJ was also, believe it or not, the leading rebounder in the game. Not only for Phoenix, but the game. Yeah, that's a problem. When your point guard is leading you on the boards, you know you're not getting the job done on the inside. Well, Tom Chambers starting his second half, picks up where he left off. Perry, Lang, Hornacek, Chambers, and Johnson for the Suns. Percy, Duckworth, Porter, Buck Williams, and Clyde Drexler for Portland. Lang pushes Duckworth, the shot won't go, but Andrew Lang picks up his third personal foul. Lang did a good job of avoiding picking up number three in the first half, so he can be aggressive with Duckworth early. Perry does get the call here to start the second half, but he has three personal fouls as well. Kevin Duckworth, according to Rick Adelman, has improved in areas they needed him to improve in. Former most improved player in the NBA. Gets them both. He has six points for the ball game. The lead is back to nine. Hornacek cuts through a couple of picks. Clyde Drexler, part of Jeff Hornacek's oh, uniform. I mean, he is all over. He's either the one or the four. The shot clock at seven. Chambers, not a very pretty shot. 
Well, that three-point basket by Ainge at the end of the first half, a huge basket. It took the crowd right back out of the game, gave Portland momentum going to the locker room, and they come out shooting it very well. Jerome Kersey now with 13 points for the ball game. He's averaging 17 in this series. And Kevin Johnson answers as Clyde Drexler was on the switch. Drexler down low. The double team by Lang. Duckworth cuts through. Chambers intercepts the pass. That is the fifth Portland turnover. Barry, spin move, puts up the right hand and shot won't go. Porter with the flop wasn't called. Buck Williams picks up his second personal foul. Tim Perry coming off that big game on Saturday afternoon. He had 27 points, nine rebounds, spent most of the first half of play on the bench with three personal fouls. He has to come out and right now start to be aggressive on both ends of the floor, but they need some of those points on that while he's on the offensive end. There's seven minutes in the first half, and that's what he's done in the series in the numbers so far tonight matches games one and two. And it's tough this time of the year trying to guess which player is going to show up for Cotton and his coaching staff over there. He uh, stumbles through game one and two, comes back here and has the big one in game three. And then because of foul trouble has not been much of a factor here tonight. Perry with five points. The lead is eight. Drexler on the cut, gets away from Hornacek, and it was a good pass from Kersey on the look. Well, that's just a, a breakdown defensively by Jeff Hornacek that time. He turned his head, allowed Drexler to sneak in under the basket for a quick two. Well, pick and roll, Chambers takes it strong to the hole, and Tom Chambers is going to have a sore back tomorrow from carrying Phoenix tonight. Well, it's nice to see him scoring, but they're going to have to distribute those points much more evenly, especially when you're giving these up. We've got a foul. Now watch uh, Jeff Hornacek here. You're not going to really see where he turns his head, but he allows Drexler to get to the paint before he found where he was. Well, that foul was on Andrew Lang. That is his fourth personal foul. Terry Porter at the line. Dan Marley up off Phoenix's bench. Marley in. Andrew Lang is going to have to sit down with four personal fouls. This is going to be a tough matchup for Phoenix, the way Portland is playing right now. Uh, they get very small with Lang going out. That means Terry, uh, Perry is going to have to now guard Buck Williams, and Chambers is going to have to try to body up against Duckworth. So you might see Portland try to exploit those two positions here. No true center in the lineup now for Phoenix. They were outscored 56 to 30 in the paint in game three. And Portland at will taking it down low tonight. And that will make it even more difficult for Phoenix to get any offensive boards. Drexler just bullies his way past Hornacek. And Drexler now with 22 points for the ball game. And the lead quickly back up to 12. Johnson finds the gap. Count the basket. We have a foul. The emotion right now of Phoenix is probably at one of the lowest it has been in the first two quarters and three minutes. They need something to get them going. They need something positive. And, you know, you have to take the points right here. You can't really be picky because you are down. But once again, when KJ scores big numbers, that means other guys are not getting involved. And I don't know if that's the way Phoenix can be successful against Portland. Five points in the quarter for Kevin Johnson. 18 for the ball game is... Buck Williams was whistled for the foul. That is his third personal. He'll remain in the game. Porter, the quick turnaround, and the bank is open. Uh, Cotton, yeah, he's going to call a 20-second timeout here. Everything is coming so easily right now for Portland. I mean, they are doing an excellent job of running their half-court offense, using the screens away from the ball. Well, Cotton changes his mind. He's going to go with a full timeout. 9.05 left in the third. The Blazers by 11. The 1992 NBA Playoffs are brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by GMC Truck, the strength of experience. Shine a light on you, shine a light on me. Your light shining for everyone to see. When you're looking 
good, you want Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. You can taste it, you can feel it, you know you got it right. Everything else is just a light. Keep your Bud Light shining. Everything else is just a light. You got it shining. Everything else is just a light. At GMC Truck, our only business is trucks and has been for over 80 years. A dedication to truck strengths and values to keep in mind. Because when you need to haul something, tow something. Carry precious cargo. Find new trails. Or simply ride high and proud. There's nothing quite as strong as a truck. GMC Truck. The strength of experience. A trade you my Santiago and a cool classic for your Rafael Palmer. <laughs> Make it the whole six pack, and you've got it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe you traded me. Hey, come on. 26 home runs, I hit 322, and you traded me? It's nothing personal, dude. Just business. Hey, don't call me, dude. Here's our score with 9.05 remaining in the third. Tonight, after Inside the NBA, TNT brings you a film about the pain of prejudice and the price of violence. Heat wave, the story of the 1965 Watts riots. That's coming up tonight, after Inside the NBA on TNT. Bill go percentage so far. We saw in the first quarter they were shooting in the 80s. Cooled off somewhat for the series. Tonight, Blazers, though, 69%. Kevin Johnson, a little curly knee limitation. <laughs> Hornacek cannot get rid of Clyde Drexler. He just can't. What a defensive job he is putting on. He just cannot shake him. Out of Kevin Johnson's range, but Marley's there to clean it up and draw the foul. Uh, I'm looking for some emotion right now from the Phoenix Suns. The expression on their face, and you see Marley right there. He should be smiling. He should be a little happy after this play, getting to the offensive boards, getting the put back in the foul. But there's just not a lot of emotion right now. And I think still you have to go back to that three-point basket that Ainge made at the end of the first half and at a time when Phoenix was starting to make a run, starting to get some emotion. It just completely knocked it right out of him. Kersey picks up his fourth personal foul. Dan Marley completes the three-point play. He has 10 for the ball game, and that brings Cliff Robinson into the lineup. Robinson playing with three personal fouls. Rick Allen facing some foul trouble right now, and they've got to take care of this mismatch. Hornacek on Robinson. Chambers comes over to hell. You have Cliff Robinson, who stands 6'10", and Jeff Hornacek, barely 6'4". I talked about the matchup problems this lineup that Phoenix has on the floor right now will suffer, and that's just one of them right there. There's another one. They've got Hornacek on Robinson. That opens it up for Buck Williams, slashing down the left side, and Williams now with eight points for the ball game. The lead is 10. Hornacek, the basket won't go, but we have the foul, and that may be on... Cliff Robinson, that would be his fourth. Well, just like Portland can afford to stand there and push the ball inside, just post up people, Phoenix must try to take advantage of their quickness on the other end. This is what Jeff Hornacek does this time. He just blows by Clyde Drexler, one of the few times in this game he's been able to do that. Robinson late getting over to cut him off to the basket. Hornacek and Clyde Drexler, a member of the 25-5 club, in points, rebounds, and assists, and that's quite a feat for both of those young men. But I think the key there was Hornacek realized that Robinson had three personals and took it to him right away. Now, Danny Age into the lineup. So Hornacek and Age, not so much of a mismatch. A much better matchup right there, and that might be a chance for Phoenix to now try to run Hornacek on some screens to get him some shots. Phoenix needs to stop. And Hornacek just pushed from back. He knocks down Aids. That was almost incidental contact, but Hornacek quickly picks up his third personal foul. Yeah, I don't know if Jeff got a hand in the back that time, if he got his foot caught on Duckworth. He looked screen, like he tripped. But something happened. I mean, he just didn't look real good coming over that screen that time. Drexler left open. Perry runs by him. The high bouncer, Williams, had the rebound. We'll have a loose ball foul, and that will be against the Suns. 
Uh, I don't know if they'll call a foul if they'll just give the ball to, give the ball to Portland out of bounds. They should have because Tim Curry yeah. grabbed yeah. Yeah, the arm. arm. All I saw was the arm. Jess Kersey uh, standing in the way. A little alley-oop. Good defensive play by Kevin Johnson, but the ball will still belong to Portland. KJ just snuck right behind Buck Williams to knock it away. Phoenix having a real difficult time matching up still. They're losing assignments for some reason, and Buck's going to complain about that one too, I think. Ains, the quick right-handed turnaround over Hornacek and Chambers. Well, they have made a lot of big-time shots, the Blazers, here in this game. Ten points for Danny Ains, two better than his average for this series. Marley for three. He's got it. Crowd has been waiting for that. But it is still a seven-point Portland advantage during the seven-minute mark of the third. Porter in traffic, no basket, offensive foul. We'll go the other way with it. Rick Adelman's shaking his head over there, doesn't agree with the call. I think Porter, though, was just a little out of control. Leaned his shoulder in to draw the contact. A lot of fouls have been called in all the playoff series, not just this one. But we've got a push, says Hugh Holland. And that'll be a Danny Ainge. His third. So we have Percy with four, Williams with three, Robinson with four, and now Ainge with three for Rick Adelman. John Wetzel, former coach here of Phoenix on the right-hand side. Jack Shallow, the other assistant, wearing the Masters green jacket on the left. The officials seemingly are calling it a lot closer right now, Ron. The whistle's coming a lot quicker than they did in the first half. Jess Percy, one of the veterans. Hugh Holland, Greg Willard. Well, we saw Phil Jackson's comments in the papers about the wrestling matches going on in his series. I think that's almost across the board. Now the lead has been cut to five, and here comes the crowd that we talked about. Got to the basket so quick. To Marley, this will light him up if they can get it. A good decision to, to back it down and make sure they get a good shot. Johnson takes age off the dribble. No basket. Illegal defense called on Portland. That'll be their first. Illegal defense. Drexler back in there trying to help out. Dan Marley, there you see Drexler in no man's land, not covering anyone. Marley posting up for the three or spotting up for the three. Chambers inside has it rejected, but we have a grab. And that'll be on Duckworth, his third. Timeout, Portland, the crowd loves it. Around 1900, GMC Truck built America's first gasoline-powered truck and went on to make trucks our only business. A heritage of trucks that, some say, worked a little harder, lasted a little longer. And that's still true today in a truck that gives you the most standard payload and the strongest resale of any full-size pickup. Sierra, from GMC Truck. More proof of the strength of experience. Ride into summer on a freedom machine from Sea-Doo at USA Honda. To say a Sea-Doo watercraft performs like nothing on Earth is no exaggeration. A Sea-Doo whips you across the water like lightning. It's quick and agile. You rarely see one standing still. With the sun in your face and the wind at your back, head out to the river, lake, or ocean on a freedom machine from Sea-Doo at USA Honda. USA Honda on the Dallas Military Road. Walla Walla. 
Now from Turner Publishing comes The American Golfer's Guide to over 500 of the best courses open to the public in the U.S., Bermuda, and the Caribbean. Imagine teeing off the side of a volcano, navigating a floating green, or 10,000 pines. The American Golfer's Guide, with a forward by U.S. Open champion Curtis Strange, is a must for beginners and scratch golfers alike. Call 1-800-282-1177 and order your copy today. At only $19.95, you'll be on par in no time. The Gorilla has them cheering in Phoenix, and for good reason. The lead is down to 5 with 6.28 as we take a look at tonight's GMC truck scoreboard. Other semifinal games, Cleveland nodding that series at two games apiece. Also in the East, the series tied at two games apiece. What a job Pat Riley and the New York Knicks have done on Chicago, and Seattle breaks into the win column. They defeat Utah by six. Some headlines from the East. Larry Bird returns, but Mark Price has the big game. And for the New York Knicks, it has been the X Factor. And in the West, Ricky was able to pierce the Jazz, and it is loud. The decibel meter here in Phoenix. That's what it was during the timeout. As Tom Chambers will go to the line. He is five of five. Phoenix now with 43 bench points as opposed to 22 for Portland, mainly because of Tom Chambers with 24 of those 43. Dan Marley starting to get it together also off the bench for Phoenix. Technically, Phoenix has two starters coming off the bench when you think of Chambers and Marley. A couple guys with a lot of experience, a lot of minutes. Crowd chanting defense, the lead is four. This is the closest. Phoenix has been able to get since the first quarter. Rex around the drive, the dish. Porter. Shot clock at four. Shot clock at two. Shot clock at one. Rex no. Time is fired. The seventh Portland turnover. Four-point lead. We were tied at 17, and that is the last tie we've had in the ball game. A Phoenix uh, taking advantage of their quickness now with the smaller lineup. They've been able to create some stuff off the dribble. They've been able to get to the boards. And then the other thing, they've not been able to... Portland has not been able to hurt them on the boards on their end of the floor offensively. Well, the delay was they've added us one second to the game clock. That might make a difference. It might. Marley for three. Doesn't get it. Perry had a chance for the board. Drexler comes down with it. The double team. Johnson backs off very quickly back to Porter. The uh, Porter has not been a factor here in the second half as he was in the first. Now Hornacek has to guard Williams. Perry moves over on Ainge. Drexler way short. Chambers goes down hard. And that might be a foul on Kevin Duckworth. And it is. And he just yells at Hugh Hollins as Duckworth picks up his fourth. Uh, he just throws Chambers out of there, said he was held. And I am surprised he didn't get a technical after the way he yeah. talked to Hugh Hollins. There's the push right there. You didn't hear the whistle because it is so loud. You'll see it better right here. And Chambers went down. It didn't look like a lot of contact there, but you must remember Duckworth... <laughs> and I like that. Listed at 280 might be a little heavy. Danny Age has had his fingers in his ears. He was walking down the court, and now Rick Adelman up off the bench. And there is the technical. technical on Kevin Duckworth. Listen to the crowd. I see that's just not good timing there for the technical. Now Rick Adelman talking to Duckworth. Now that, that's just not good timing, Ron. A tough situation. Phoenix already with the momentum. This will serve once again to get the crowd even more involved. And you see Danny Ainge right there and his reaction to the noise here. Right, where we are right now, it is a three-point Portland lead. 5.30 left to be played in the third quarter. The closest Phoenix has gotten since early in the first. And Duckworth has to be careful now because one more tee and he is gone. 
Mark Bryant has checked into the lineup. Bryant, after not playing in game one and game two of this series, came in and got some minutes in game three, played pretty well, had uh, three points, uh, excuse me, two points in 13 minutes. He rebounded well, he played good defense. He gives him some quickness at the center position. points for Tom Chambers and it is a one point game. Phoenix on an 11 to 2 run. And now Tim Perry and Buck Williams hook it up as it gets a little physical down low. That'll be Perry's fourth personal foul. But he picked up three quick in the first quarter where he only played seven minutes. And not a real good place for that foul to occur. Of course, Williams out away from the away from the basket. You want him to catch the ball out there if he possibly can. Four of four from the line. He has eight points. And now Sabalos comes into the lineup. Very system. Sabalos in that first half. He did eight minutes, but he was three of five from the fourth for seven points. And Phoenix, Phoenix gets even smaller as Tim Perry sits down. 6'9", then replaced by Sabalos at 6'6". Six, six. Phoenix with a chance for time. Chambers, the switch underneath Sabalos. We're tied. It's a scoring machine. Sabalas, he comes on the floor, runs to the open place. He has that knack for finding the open place, being at the right place at the right time. Defensively, this is the matchup that Phoenix won. Ames for three. He gets the Blazers the lead back. His third three-pointer of the ball game. 13 points now for Danny Ames. Watch KJ's penetration. Chambers spotting up all alone. Nobody sees him. Here comes Marley in strong. Cut it. And Drexler gets away. The Suns come to cover. Bryant doesn't get it. Watch Chambers spots up for the three. Bryant giving him a lot of room. Takes it strong, the basket won't go. I see if Bryant is going to be in the game, he can't allow those kind of plays to happen. He's, he missed one on the other end, and then he comes back, allows Chambers to put the ball on the floor, get around, and he reaches in from behind, gets the hit. Well, Rick Adelman discussing right now what he wants to do. I'm, I'm sure he's thinking whether or not to come back with Duckworth. He has to get someone in there, though, that's going to be effective down low. Well, this great, great passing right here. A couple of times ago, the pass that Sabalas had just checked into the game. Now Portland's going to go small because they'll take Bryant out and they bring Edis Botley back into the lineup. Now, that's a good move because... Uh, it's Phoenix. almost a four-guard offense, though, for Portland now. But Phoenix has gone small. Chambers not a real physical player, so he should be able to be handled by Buck Williams. Let's we'll see who, this will be interesting, who matches up with whom on this. Johnson will pick up Porter. Sabalos comes out on Watley. Age on Hornacek. Marley on Drexler and Williams to Chambers. Drexler from outside, nothing but that. It was a two. The lead is two inside of four minutes in the third. Johnson pulls it up. Short. The tip will go. Marley had the rebound and it taken away by Terry Porter. And now the Blazers with some numbers. So Williams. What a play, Buck. Williams, he can't finish. Johnson has Marley on the right. Chambers. A lot of time, maybe too much time. Sabalos had it. Last touch by Portland. Now Chambers had too much time to think about that one, and he is upset that he missed that one. He's laughing. Uh, you'll see Buck Williams go to the basket right here, and Chambers with a hand up forced him to miss that. Buck may, might have tried to get a little bit too cute on that one instead of going on up, tearing, trying to tear the rim down. That's a kick. Another 24. 
325 left in the third. It is a two-point ball game, 96-94. Portland led by nine in intermission. Uh, Greg Willard and Jess Kersey talking it over. And they're going to keep 325 on the game clock, 24 on the shot clock. But instead of bringing it out down low, they get it on the side. Well, although the game clock didn't move, they're thinking that the shot clock, the move? actual game clock yeah. did move, the shot clock did not, so they added one second back. Well, we've added two seconds here in the quarter. Tries to free up for the set. He's got it. Uh, you don't want him to get going because uh, <laughs> this guy can fill him up and he can score points very quickly. Well, they're in the game. Phoenix is in the game tied at 96. This Hornacek is only two of six, but he has only seven points. Wow. Order the long J for a two. Doesn't go. Ainge with the rebound. A whistle and a foul, and that will be on Savalos. I like what Ainge has given the Trailblazers. Trailblazers, he's made two or three big shots from the outside, but here's something you don't see a whole lot from Ainge. He just works hard, gets to the offensive floor. Yes, he clears out a little bit, but, you know, you're going to have to do that. I mean, so what if you get the foul called in that situation? You're in there working. You might get lucky, as he did that time, and he gets to the free throw line. Believe it or not, that was Portland's first offensive rebound in the game. But then again, when you shoot 60%, you don't need a whole lot of offensive rebounds. Well, that's still surprising, though, because Phoenix has been forced to play the small lineup a lot here in this game. Percy back into the lineup. They're going to give Porter a breather. So now it'll be Watley and Ainge in the backcourt. The forwards will go with Drexler and Kersey, and Williams will play the center position. Danny Ainge, three points here in the quarter, 14 for the game, 19 is his playoff high. The playoff veteran out of BYU nails it. The lead is two. Yeah, they're going to let Jeff, let Jeff handle it a little bit more. I think that's a good decision because he hasn't been able to get freed up off the screens. Great touch pass. Four to six to Savalos. That is nice. A shooting guard with a point guard's vision. Jeff Hornacek. Well, they are running Hornacek over the screens, keeping him thinking about his defense. Watley's knuckleball won't go down. Phoenix looking for their first lead since they led it four to two. Johnson. has the lead for the first time since 4-2. They trailed 98-96 and they scored four straight. KJ working against Watley has been able to at least get close to the penetration on this play. Hornacek with a nice pass to Sabalas, who is always around the rim. And then watch KJ here. He does, in fact, break Watley down. Watley trying to avoid the foul. And that's a big shot right there. And Simmons said uh, the crowd is a factor. In a close game, they definitely will be. The Suns have never won a series in which they trail low, too. It has only been done five times in NBA history. But two years ago, if you remember, Portland won the first two against Phoenix in the Western Finals at their place. Dropped two here in Phoenix and went on to win the series. Drexler tied up by Chambers, three on one. Marley put the ball on his hip, should have been a traveling, but Sabalos can't get it. Uh, missed opportunity there for a quick two. Ames inside, he's got the big left-handed basket. What a shot by Danny Ames. Well, it didn't look real good. Run, but the results are, are just there, and as I mentioned, Ainge making some big, big plays on the offensive end of the floor. 
Good teams will take advantage of opportunities, and Phoenix missed a chance to get a quick two. Marley on the break, coming right back down with two of their own. A real concern right now from Phoenix is Kevin Johnson, the fact that his shots are coming up short right now. Now, he's saying he got hit across the arm. Kevin Johnson picks up the technical foul. But K.J. has been handling the basketball a lot in this game. He has a tendency to get a little tired down the stretch. I think Cotton will get him out and give him a couple minutes. 118 remaining to be played in the third quarter, and we are tied up at 100. Game four of Phoenix and Portland, and Danny Ainge at the line shooting the technical foul. Ames now with 15 points as Steve Burt comes in and Cotton Fitzsimmons wisely puts his superstar point guard on the bench. Give him a chance to cool down a little bit. And Burt in the lineup joined by Sabalos, Hornacek, Chambers, and Marley. Williams, Drexler, Ames, Watley, and Kersey for Portland. KJ upset. He said he's getting hit on the arm as the shot is being released. They have been coming up short. A lot of times when they do that, you might be just a little fatigued. Marley muscling on Drexler. The spin. The shot, it goes still. Uh, Drexler just using his strength right there against Marley to get that shot to go. He is 10 of 15 for Clyde Drexler. He has 26 points for the ball game. Chambers uh, has a stick to play. play. All ball. Quick hands, Buck Williams. Ames back to Watley. Blazers by three inside of 35 seconds. The switch inside Drexler knocked away. And that'll be an offensive foul on Clyde Drexler, his second. Clyde complaining that Sabalas took a swipe at the ball. He might have a good argument. Watch, there's the hit across the arm before the contact was made, and Sabalas gets the break there. Six-second difference between the game and the shot clock. Porter has spent a lot of time on the bench here in this third period. Now Burt, shot clock at seven. To Chambers, the running right-hander won't go. He pushes off for the loose ball foul. That was obvious right in front of Hugh Hollins. Picks up his third. <laughs> obvious to everyone except the guy with the ball, Tom Chambers. I uh, haven't been an NBA player that actually admits he committed a foul anyway. And we'll go to the line again down the other end with 8.9 left to be played in the quarter. And KJ is going to come back in. The fans looking up at the diamond vision. And they don't like the call. But then again, they didn't make it. Hugh Hollins and Greg Willard, a little uh, referee conference down low. Pack will check into Portland's lineup. Kevin Johnson trying to get into Phoenix. And Percy will go into the line. Just a little surprise. Cotton is coming back right now with Kevin Johnson. I am too. Uh, you know, 8.9 seconds. I'm sure he wants KJ in there to push the ball down the floor. Uh, what will be interesting is whether or not he leaves him in the game or if he pulls him out at the beginning of the fourth period for a couple minutes. And here comes number 14, Robert Pack, the rookie free agent out of Southern Cal. And uh, they're going to send Buck Williams take a little breather. Chambers will sit down, and Kevin Johnson comes in. Now, Johnson also has to be careful because he's playing with two personal fouls, and he doesn't want to pick up his third with only 8.9 left here in the third. If Phoenix uses it wisely, Johnson on age. Marley from about 40 feet doesn't get it. As the buzzer sounds, we have played 36 minutes at Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Portland gets the last six points of the period, and they will go to quarter number four, up by four. This is Andreas Schroeder, German Olympic wrestler. In an average week, he'll lift 40 tons of iron and run five miles almost straight up all before practice.
think he's tough? Wait till you see the guys at the ticket window if you don't have your Visa card. Because once again, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Good morning, America! Good morning! Good morning! Wake up, wake up, you sleepyhead! Good morning to you! And you, and you! Get up, get up, get out of bed! Every morning all across America, over 50 million people come to life with Delta faucets. Live, love, laugh and be happy. Good morning, good morning, Delta, good morning. the way water is brought to life. <laughs> At GMC Truck, we've seen days like this for over eight years. And have learned the value of a van that gives you the most room in its class. The added safety of four-wheel anti-lock brakes. The truck... Side as we have 12 minutes left to be played. And speaking of Harry, how about this guy? Bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> and Ron, you tried to convince me that when you were a little younger, you could get up like that, but yeah. I'm not going to buy it. He does not have the needle on the record all the time. How about scoring by quarters? Good quarter for the Suns. How scoring them by five, and they still find themselves down by four. Is Foul trouble now becoming a factor in this ball game as we have five players with four personal fouls. Right now for the Blazers, it's Kirstie Robinson and Duckworth, Lang and Perry, who have spent most of the time sitting on the soft cushion to the right of Cotton Fitzsimmons. But in the fourth quarter, they will start. And that same starting five that began the game with the exception of Marley. Yeah, I think that's a good move to get some big people back in there, although Tim Perry, the only one in there, Lang is still over on the bench. Ainge slashes to the hole, takes a hard hit. It goes off the chest of Clyde Drexler. Portland has won all seven playoff series in which they led two games to one. Well, I think it's uh, very important that the way Portland is running at Jeff Hornacek, every time he squares up to take the shot, they are just not going to let him beat them so far in this game. Only seven points for Hornacek. Five in the third quarter. Percy from the outside doesn't get it. Marley with the rebound. Tough shot for Percy just coming off the bench. Johnson from the outside. Nothing but net. And just Percy calls a quick timeout because there was a little bit of fireworks on the floor when the Gorilla went off. They lit off some fireworks coming up yeah. immediately following our game inside the NBA with Fred Hickman and again making a cameo appearance from the LA Clippers, Doc Rivers. That'll be coming up next on TNT. There was also an orange thrown onto the, to the floor and the announcement men made right now to please not do that. Two-point Blazer lead, 11 minutes left in the ball game. They will go back to Portland on Thursday inside. Buck Williams looked for the jam and then the soft touch. Well, Phoenix didn't handle the pick and roll situation well at all that time. Cotton upset. Tim Curry, or was it Sabalas, went with the screen instead of staying with his man. Kevin Johnson slashing to the hole again. Enos Watley picks up the foul. That is his second. I thought it might have been on Jerome Kersey, whose body was sprawled out underneath. KJ will go to the line. He is six of eight so far tonight. I mentioned KJ has a tendency to get just a little bit tired down the stretch when he has to do most of the running of the offense. In game three, I thought it was real important that Phoenix was able to get some other guys to handle the basketball a lot. Hornacek was having a great game. He handled it a lot. Burt off the bench handled it some. Sabalas handled it some. Took some of the pressure off this guy. They've not had that luxury tonight. A little pressure. Marley with the steal. Rejected by Buck Williams. What a block uh, big by Williams. Nice. His eighth of the playoffs. Loose ball. Sabalos kicks it. Drexler spotting up. The shot by Ainge, it won't go. 
Phoenix with two chances could not take advantage. To Perry, inside for two. And a nice job of penetration and a good job by Phoenix controlling their emotions that time. They kicked two chances away, came right back and attacked again and got a basket finally. 106 off. We have 10 04 left to be played. Kevin Johnson picks up his third personal foul. And anything close right now is going to go the other way because KJ isolated one of the officials and attacked him to draw the technical. Now there he is penetrating. Perry comes up with the pass and then keeps his composure there to get that one to go. Hoken is a true player. <laughs> Don't want to get those officials on your bad side. Here comes Hornacek. He has Drexler to beat. This is off. Slammed. <laughs> Quickly, Portland back. Robinson passes to me. Now, see, I was watching Rick Adelman over there. He signaled a timeout. His team didn't see it. He backed off, and his team threw the ball away. When we come back, we'll have 9.46 left. The Suns by two. Viscosity breakdown is a very important issue. It's probably the most important issue on the motor oil. You want the oil protect, and at the same time, you don't want it to break down, and Penzoil is definitely the oil they use. Penzoil outperforms any other leading motor oil against viscosity breakdown. Using Penzoil, I have not seen any oil-related problems in our race car and our engines. It's good enough to run in my racing engine. I think it ought to be good enough for everybody else to use it. Penzoil performance, protection, quality, that says it all. Introducing Tire Foam from Armor All. One spray, and even old tires look great. Ah. Kind of makes you wish we made car foam, doesn't it? New Tire Foam from Armor All. Just spray, walk away. Lexus LS400 features a very sophisticated suspension system. So while life may have its rough stretches, your ride through it won't. And here's tonight's Dutch boy in the paint. Second chance points all the Suns. Offensive rebounds a bit misleading because Portland has shot so well. Well, they had shot so well for much of the game, although they haven't shot as well here in the second half. And particularly in this period. Only one offensive rebound, though, for Portland here tonight to nine for Phoenix. Uh, one of the keys, I think, here in the fourth quarter for Phoenix regaining the lead is the fact that Portland has four turnovers in the fourth quarter, eight in the first three quarters, and they just about peaked the tomometer, which is Tom Chambers, 27 points. Lang in, Hornacek out. Just a minute or two for Jeff. He's played a lot of minutes. And he's frustrated, and a little bit frustrated. He'll be back soon. Portland has the size right now in the lineup. Phoenix does not. Johnson one-on-one -on -one with Porter. Shot clock at eight. Marley lets the three go. It was halfway down. I thought that one was in. <laughs> That's allergic to net. Another guy we haven't heard from. Terry Porter, since that first period, hasn't really been all that effective. Only four points in the second half. The turnaround by Robinson and can't find the hole. Nine minutes left to be played. Two-point Phoenix lead. Sabalos works off the pick. Kevin Johnson doesn't even look at him. Perry has it rejected by Robinson. Whistle, we have a foul. Well, that'll be on Perry after the shot. So Perry picks up his fifth personal foul. Well, he has picked up at least three fouls that he 
I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense the fouls he made. I mean, like on that play, it, it just, it, you know, when you're a key player, you can't afford to pick up fouls like that and then force to the bench, and you can't give your team any minutes. Well, Cotton worked the year of Jess Kersey while Todd Chambers was checking into the lineup. But Chambers has been the offensive force leading Phoenix with 27 so far in the game at 9 of 13. Now it's Duckworth on leg. Yeah, the bad thing about that foul on Tim Perry is that Phoenix had come up with the ball. Johnson looks for Marley down low, can't find him. A great defensive conversion by Portland. They may get quicker off back offensively and defensively than any other team. Inside, top the basket. That's the kind of emotion that I have been waiting to see from Phoenix. Watch after this shot here. Great passing, Chambers. Sabalas loves to work around the basket. Duckworth with the foul. And then watch this reaction. I mean, the emotion. And that's Tom Chambers. That's the old guy leading cheers. That is the fifth foul on Duckworth. Chambers had it. Sabalos had it, nobody gets it, and then we have a foul, and that will be on Sabalos, but only his second. By Drexler getting some much-needed rest, sitting on the side. Drexler with 26 points on the game, the leading scorer for Portland. We will see him momentarily as Phoenix has got one of their biggest leads of the ball game at 4, 110, 106. Chambers and Johnson on the double team. Shot clock at 7. Kersey lets it fly. Nothing but the net. Tell you what, though, Portland getting every shot right now from the outside. They're not the best team they could be when they're doing that. Inside, Johnson to Lang, he can't get it to go. Duckworth had to come out, which opened up Lang, who can't convert. Ames lets the three go. He's got it, and Portland has a one-point lead. He has made some big ones here in this game. Four three-pointers for Danny Ames. 19 points, ties his playoff high for this year. Chambers returns it, doesn't get it. Phoenix with an opportunity to up their lead and they don't take advantage of it. Now Danny Ainge is limping on the far side of the court and he wants the basketball. I find a way to get it to him when he's shooting it with as much confidence as he had is in this game. Robinson, the spin move and much credit to the Portland Trailblazers who were down by four and have scored seven straight points. 6.55 left to be played. The Blazers by three. The Lexus Coupe can be equipped with a cellular phone that allows you to dial, answer, and hang up without ever letting go of the wheel. Proving once you get your hands on a Lexus, they tend to stay that way. Women today face a one in nine chance of breast cancer. The good news is you can change those odds with monthly breast self-examination, regular medical consultations, mammogram screenings if you're over 40, and by the foods you choose. High fat diets mean higher breast cancer risk. To learn more about diet and breast cancer, write the American Institute for Cancer Research, Washington, D.C., 20069. You can change the odds. Some things were meant to fail. He has the ball. He wants to drive down the key, but the defenders won't let him. He goes into the air. A fadeaway jumper. Oh, it's a beautiful. And some things weren't. Like Dutch Boy Satin Finish House Paint. Nothing resists cracking, peeling, and fading better. Nothing. So for exceptional durability, look to Dutch Boy. What a beautiful move. Because while some things were meant to fade, only Dutch Boy gives you the look that lasts. 113, 110, 655 left to be played. 
Well, the, the Portland now starting to get into the fast break. They had been successful taking shots like these from the outside. The last basket came inside. Danny Ainge has left the floor. He has gone to the locker room. But look at the three-point shooting here in the playoffs. 25% of this series, 51%. And tonight, they're shooting 67% from three-point land. My goodness. And that has given them a three-point cushion, if you can call it that. Hornacek back into the lineup for Phoenix. Drexler, once again, playing me in my shadow. Yes. Well, Jeff just has not had any space here. Well, shot clock's a three. He's going to have to fire it up, but he does. Doesn't get it. But Marley battles for the rebound. Loose ball foul on Cliff Robinson. His fifth. Duckworth with five. Robinson now with five. Well, I tell you, Clyde is doing the job on Hornacek. I mean, what else can he say? He is putting the D on. Jeff cannot get a clear look at the basket. You talk about Clyde Drexler, people say five slam and jam in offense. That's not the case tonight. It's, it has not. Finally, Hornacek on a switch is able to get only his second field goal in the second half. He has, uh, he was able to shake Drexler that time. The first time he's been able to do that. Nine points for Hornacek. Nearing six minutes in the fourth. Porter has it, shot clock at six. Let's it fly, nothing but that again. <laughs> this has been a fun game to watch. Have mercy, says Cotton. Yeah, what can you say? When you make shots like that, you can just put your head down and shake it, as Cotton did that time. What a display by the Blazers tonight. Marley from the outside can't get it to go. And it is a three-point Portland lead, and they have the basketball. Porter for three, doesn't get it. Don't know that I like that shot that time. One of those things, well, why not? Johnson inside, Lang, the tip, and it goes. Well, they need something from Lang right now. They need his work around the offensive boards. 11 points for Lang. Rick Allen said he wanted to keep Phoenix a jump shooting team. Keep him on the outside. Five minutes left to be played. Drexler, the high See, rainbow. Another, another shot that's not good. Marley has beaten everybody down court. Hornacek has to get away from Porter. Shakes, fakes, and he draws the foul. Every time Portland puts up the quick shot from the outside, it leads to the quick shot attempt on the other end. Kersey now with five. And if you think this is exciting, tomorrow night, Chicago in New York, a war in the East. That series tied up at two games apiece. It's going to begin at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And we'll follow it up with the Jazz and the Sonics, with Seattle looking to even that series at two games apiece. All coming your way tomorrow night on TNT. Jerome Kersey upset. You see Ainge back out of the locker room. Seems to be okay. Kersey upset, pointing to both... Drexler and Porter saying, look, you've got to use your head, guys. We need better shots than those two you just put up. Could be one of the best pure shooters in the league, Jeff Hornacek. Along with the Reggie Millers, the Chuck Persons, the John Paxons, Hornacek 5-5, five and, five. and Phoenix regains the lead in the crowd stand. 14,496 of them. Becky right here, Portland will try to get something going to the basket. Drexler, the return, count the basket, and he draws the foul. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a better shot. And there's Kersey saying, look, I didn't mean to put you on the spot right there, but man, we need shots like this instead of those shots from the outside. Drexler just gets to the paint and very quickly with the second shot attempt, Chambers with the foul. Chambers four. Drexler, a big miss. It is a one-point Blazer lead. The report on Danny Ainge, a left ankle sprain, and he will be able to play again. Hornacek to Marley. Does not get the jam at the tip. Chambers tries to keep it alive, and he does. A little sloppy. Marley to Lang. The big!
of this game. Oh, man. I think that might be on a highlight film or two, huh? Oh, put a Band-Aid on the rim. That hurt. Boy, that goes right with the slam that Sean Kemp did on Alton Lister. One of those took it right to your face. And Portland throws it away. Turnover number 14. Six turnovers in the fourth quarter. Hornacek for two. Uh, oh, you don't want that. <laughs> you that. Boy, this crowd very, very happy and excited about that. We talked about Jeff Hornacek and how he is needed by this team. He has been quiet for three quarters and approximately eight and a half minutes. But he is now waking up. <laughs> Paul, talk about timing. He's one of those that likes the big time shot. Now watch this Andrew Lang on duck work. Oh, that is nice. <laughs> That's duck work play with five fouls. What's a duck word? <laughs> that is good. I like that. That is good. 3.33 left to be played in the ball game. The Suns lead it by three. 120 to 117. In case you just joined us, Portland led by as many as 15. But as you see, they are now in foul trouble. They led by nine in intermission, four at the end of three. They lead the series two games to one. Game five will be played Thursday night in Portland. And Tom Chambers fans standing because he has been the key offensively for the Suns tonight. Blazers with a couple. Timeouts left. Suns with three plus a 20. Neither team has a foul to give. They said it gets loud in this building. Saturday they said it was the loudest they've ever heard. Of. And I think they might have topped it here tonight. The key now, can Portland come back? They have tonight so many times when Phoenix has regained the lead with some emotion of their own led by Drexler, Hershey, and Porter. Well, the momentum changed here in the fourth period during that little stretch when Portland started taking the outside jump shots, giving Phoenix opportunities to get in the open floor. I love this time of the year. Drexler loses the handle, regains, shot clock at eight. Drexler's on way, pumping big belly, shot clock at three. He stepped out of bounds. Phoenix has it. Oh. Well, Lang has done an excellent job on duck work on both ends. Taking it to him offensively, keeping him out of the paint on the defensive end. Drexler on the switch. He picks up Johnson. Now it is Porter on Hornacek. And he's got the three. Oh. Oh, I didn't even think he had control of it. I mean, he had it on his palm. Porter to the hole, goes hard to the floor. That was a hard foul. Terry Porter gets up. It might have been Chambers that got him. Yes. Oh, that hurts. I mean, Chambers' fifth personal foul, but Terry gets right back up. That's the life of the point guard. Chambers with five, and they need to keep him in the ball game. And Porter will go to the line. He is 4 of 4 so far this evening. 21 points for Porter.
quarter, one of two. How you can concentrate. I can't answer the phone when my two girls cry. <laughs> Two thirty-four. We've got a belly and Buck Williams. He picks up his fourth personal foul, getting on Tom Chambers and bring out him and what he wanted so badly to, to let him know. But he backed off, understanding that this is not the time to pick up a technical. That's when a coach begins to make comments about the officiating, not exactly facing one of the officials, like he's talking to himself. Or to one of his assistants. Yeah. <laughs> he's screaming at his assistant, talking directly about the official that blew the whistle. Can you believe he made that call that day? Chambers at the line, 9 of 11 tonight. They'll have another. 27 points. 28 points now for Tom Chambers. Well, Tom Chambers said in the paper, I can still do it. Had a war of words with Cotton, but right now his actions are speaking louder than words. Porter again takes it inside. Oh. Jeff Hornacek has to grab him. <laughs> Terry Porter is just says, hey, you guys aren't going to do it. I am. He is not backing off, though. Phoenix is uh, trying to make sure that Terry Porter does not get a shot from behind the three-point line. So they are running at him, forcing him to take the ball to the basket and laying with the foul. And Porter knows that he's going to get hit as he takes the ball to the basket. And Terry Porter will step back to the line. Terry Porter, first round pick back at 85 out of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Coming up next, Fred Hickman, our good friend back in Atlanta, will highlight this game, plus a couple of other special features on Inside the NBA, along with Dr. Rivers. Coming up next on TNT. Terry Porter calmly steps up, hits both of them. We have 2.26 left to be played. The seven-point Phoenix lead is down to five. Since its introduction umpteen commercials ago, the Lexus LS400 has been hailed by car magazines, raved over by critics, and praised by owners in survey after survey. Which now the pressure by the Blazers. They need to get the ball in the hands of Kevin Johnson. There it is. He breaks the press. He's got Farley, but he wisely holds it up. I think that's a big trip right here for Phoenix. I think they need a basket here. Keep the pressure on Portland. You know how quickly they can score. Harley for three, doesn't get it. Harness at the tip, almost had it. Clyde Drexler, two eight points in the third quarter, only two here in the fourth. Well, I don't understand that shot, that three-point shot. I just can't figure that out. Percy from the outside, nothing but net. And that's what I mean right there. Uh, Portland scores so quickly that you can't give them a chance to push it down the floor without using up a lot of time. And those three-point shots will lead to long rebounds and quick shots on the other end. Harley cuts through the paint. Johnson sizes up Portland. The switch. Chambers. Way long. Hornacek. And Drexler tie it up underneath. But Jeff Hornacek, two trips down the court in a row, he's been able to sneak behind everyone doesn't have a whole lot of chance on this tip considering that Clyde Drexler once had a 43-inch vertical leap dunked on a basket 11 foot one watch Kevin Johnson try to steal it can't quite get there here we go a minute and a half left it is a three-point Phoenix lead Percy left alone to Robinson, the basket goes, and Williams and Lang starting to tie it up. Got to keep an eye on that. One point, Phoenix lead. Phoenix needs something here going to the basket. To Marley, shot clock at five. Clock at three. Marley, the pull-up fadeaway, hits the rim. Nothing else. The tip. And the Blazers have a chance to regain the lead. 
It was a seven-point Phoenix lead. Now it is only one. Rexler, stolen by Kevin Johnson. And we've got a foul. Now this crowd gets so loud they can't hear the whistle all the time. It did blow in the backcourt. Oh, that's a good job defensively by Phoenix. Marley, I think it was, cut off Drexler as he tried to get to the basket. He threw it back, just flipped it back. There's Marley. Now, look, he cuts it off. KJ, with the great anticipation, picks it off. There's your foul. And we've got a timeout. Portland. So, Kevin Johnson will go to the line, and he is 8 of 10 so far from the strike this evening. We talked about the fact that Phoenix was not protecting the ball in the first three games of this series. Tonight, they are. Portland is not. No turnovers in this period. Five for the game. Kevin Johnson steps right up. And that's playing against a pretty good defensive team in Portland. He's 9 of 11. He has 25 for the game. Miguel Knight watching. Doing a little Jerry Tarkanian imitation. Knight on the injured list. Neck injury. Should be back next year. And now we've got a timeout by Portland. Still up for something behind the three-point line. And Porter spotted up like he would try. The but basket goes in the foul. See, that's what you get when you take the ball to the basket. You know you're going to get hit. You just know it. And you get lucky in a situation like that. It goes down. So now you have a chance to tie it up. That's why I think Portland is much better when they don't rely on the outside jump shot. And Andrew Lang fouls out at the 33.6 mark with 13 points. The reaction by the Portland bench. Lang fouled out of game one and he fouls out of game four. And Tim Perry comes into the lineup. And he's playing with five personal fouls, and the lead can be zero. Porter with a chance to tie it up. He is seven of eight from the line. We are tied. Phoenix can get a two for one if they hurry. Johnson, the two for one is going by the wayside and they turn the ball over, Portland has it, they can take the last shot, they're not calling a timeout, we are tied at 27, the final 15 seconds, uh, KJ missed a chance to take the shot, Drexler, the Porter, for two, he doesn't get it, the rebound, over the backboard, over the backboard, it will be Phoenix's ball, and they of course will call the timeout, Rick Adelman cannot believe it. Porter from way outside. Phoenix bought a major break. I'm not too sure they would have gotten to the rebound. Well, they, they were not because uh, there, were, there were two black shirts there. And they would have had the rebound. Yeah, now, once again, is this a good shot? I think it is on the road. You go for the three. You go for a chance to, to win. Now, there it is. Now, look. Kersey is there, and Adam, Rick Adelman, I don't know that he wanted that shot. Well, what, is, what is the chance of it bouncing over the backboard? You have two black shirts there. Actually, Jeff Hornacek was able to get the hand in there and swipe it away. Okay, now, Phoenix, 4.6 left. Still a lot of time remaining to get the ball up. They're out of timeouts except for a 20. Portland only with one timeout. There is the man who's had the hot hand. We saw him take the shot in game one. The running right-hander from about 15 and didn't go. Will we see a repeat? Well, you must understand that the reason Chambers got this shot at the end was because Phoenix couldn't get the ball in to Kevin Johnson, which is, of course, their first option. Give him an opportunity to work with the ball to create something. The problem, though, is KJ, as was the case as he took the ball to the basket the last time, was not looking for a shot. He was looking for a pass. I think he has to take the ball to the basket, knowing that he's going to get hit, or expecting to at least, and then try to get something himself. Uh, I think, though, Phoenix would still like to get KJ the ball. Chambers will be there. Hornacek will be there. Marley will be there. Three guys they can go to. Oh, Westfall taps. Dan Marley on the, on the back. 
He gets with Sabalos. Phoenix will go with Johnson. Hornacek, Chambers, Marley, and Cedric Sabalos. Portland counters with Porter, Kershaw, Drexler, Robinson, and Williams. This is it. They are standing. Will we go to game five tied up at two games apiece, or will we have overtime? I think it's interesting. Clyde Drexler with our KJ. To Marley. And he's tied up at the whistle. We're going into overtime. What a defensive effort by the Portland Trailblazers. Phoenix looks confused yes. on offense. Uh, and uh, Chambers handling the ball that far away from the basket, that was the play. Uh, I just, I don't understand why they didn't make a better effort to get the ball to KJ. We've got five more minutes coming your way. Stay with us. My father grew up in the Depression. I grew up in the 60s. He fought a war and, and I didn't. All we ever saw in each other were all of the differences. I think we fought because we believed there'd always be time to take things back, make things right. I think now's the time for me to do that. cars are made with sheets of metal. But one of these sheets is actually a sandwich of steel, resin, and steel used by Lexus to help quiet the cabin of the LS400. Care to guess which one? Twenty-seven, one twenty-seven. as we head to a five-minute overtime period, the last play, Jack. Chambers went to the ball. There's KJ out there. He was wide open. Marley well guarded. It looked like they wanted to get the ball from Chambers back to Marley and give Marley a chance. But, you know, a lot of time had run out, run out before Chambers was able to get the ball to Marley. It looked like they were running in slow motion, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm surprised that someone with a little bit more quickness, a little bit better ball handling skill, skills than Chambers ended up with the ball. Tom Chambers will be joined by Hornacek, Johnson, Marley, and Perry. As we head to the five-minute overtime period, tied at 127, we'll begin it with a jump ball as Clyde Drexler comes out for Portland, joined by Williams Robinson. Porter as we look at the foul trouble with Robinson, Kersey, and Duckworth with five. Andrew Lang's already sitting on the five. Perry and Chambers with five apiece, and we're going to go at it again. Well, I give Portland a lot of credit for coming back in this game. I'll tell you what, they were down seven, seven points, and it looked like it was over for them, but they stayed tough. Got to the basket very quickly, did the things they had to to tie this one up. Here we go again. It's going to be Phoenix's ball to start the overtime period. And Greg Ward, I think, says, I'm going to toss it up again. Well, Hugh Holland said that the ball didn't go all the way up, and Kersey hit it actually on the way up. But I think it was a poor toss. I don't think the toss was good. Now watch, it's not even going to go up very high. I mean, you just have to put it up there a little bit higher than that. And Greg Willard said, look, I, I, I didn't make a good toss. They're going to do it over. And, and Portland Portland has over there. And Kersey comes out of the pile flying. Phoenix led by seven. That was their biggest lead. Portland by 15 early. The Robinson cutting. Rejected by Tim Perry. And then Kevin Johnson just tosses it all the way down the end, and he goes into the crowd. But what a rejection by Tim Perry. Well, he comes over right here as Robinson does a pretty good job of getting to the paint area. And Kevin Johnson ends up on one of the photographers down there. Now, if he made the save, the ball should go. They should take the ball out from the other end of the court. Where the whistle sounded before. Whistle sounded, okay. He stepped on the line. Well, now they're saying there's got to be six seconds on the shot clock. It was not a shot. There was no possession change. Paul Westfall says there should be two seconds on the clock, yeah. not six. Now they're adding 
three seconds to the game clock. So we had <laughs> two seconds added in the fourth quarter, three here in overtime. Drexler on Marley, backs him in, rejected by Chambers, who gets a piece of it. Inside to Robinson, who cleans it up. Well, that's what Portland gives you when they take the ball to the hole. First blood drawn by Portland. Hornacek for two, doesn't get it. Marley had the rebound, lost it to Kersey. Drexler over Hornacek. And he just threw the ball up there, knowing that Drexler, a better athlete than Hornacek, was going to come up with that. I mean, I didn't think it was a good pass at first, but Drexler knows and made it look easy. Marley for three off the back of the iron. Hornacek tracks down the loose ball, takes it inside, goes hard, but the whistle blows. And Jeff upset. He, he thought he should have made that basket. That is, that is on Robinson. That is his sixth personal foul, so he will have to sit down. Now, watch this pass right here. Porter's just going to lay it up there, allow Drexler to go get it. Makes it look easy. And there's Robinson picking up foul number six. Marley, you see the upset on his face. He thought he should have made that one. Hornacek goes hard. Robinson fouls out with 16 points, and Danny Ainge will check into the lineup. Ainge already with four threes, has 21 for the ball game. Hornacek a perfect six of six from the line. 17 points, but those are quiet 17 points. 15 coming in the second half. And seven from the free throw line. draining game for both teams. Who's going to be standing? Kersey from the outside is short. Marley able to push Drexler. No, he did. That is to Kersey. Yeah, he just he pushed him right into just Kersey's lap. Kevin Johnson to the hole. Cut the basket. But just enough hesitation there to stand Terry Porter up. Watch. He's going to get Porter to the free throw line. And watch how he hesitates right here. See, and then Porter raises up. KJ with that quick dribble gets to the basket. And that foul was on Porter. That is his fourth personal foul. Kevin Johnson now 11 of 13 from the line. And the Suns back on top to the strains of defense. Well, I think I would run a double team at Drexler. Drexler, the off-balance shot won't go, but we have a whistle. But a good defensive job by Dan Marley. And Marley handles it pretty well, but that is a whole lot to ask of Marley when Drexler catches the ball on the low post. I think I would have to run a double team at him before he gets in the act of shooting. Marley stays right with him. Perry a little late getting there, and he fouls out of the game. Well, Perry fouls out with seven points. Not very effective, but to his defense, he has played the entire game in foul trouble. And at the line, it will be Clyde Drexler. We'll have another. 3.13 left to be played. Drexler, seven rebounds, ten assists. Right into the hands of Buck Williams. Now you can't make those plays in Cotton over on the sideline, and I'm sure he's not thinking it, but that was Chambers on that play, and upset that they didn't get that rebound. Porter gives Portland a two-point lead. The switch, Johnson inside, Sabalos the reverse, too far underneath, taps it onto the support. Phoenix will have it. Sabalos got caught a little bit too far up under the basket. Phoenix with a break there. And Phoenix will take it out right in front of Portland's bench. 
When it hits the support, they go off to the side. Two forty-five left to be played. Johnson gets around everybody. The big slam over Kersey. Now that's why I think he needs to always look to the basket when he gets to the paint. And Drexler can't convert. He wants the foul. No whistle. Four on five. Chambers looks for Sabalos. Hornacek off the pick. We have a whistle. That will be on Buck Williams. His fifth personal foul. How about Kevin Johnson? He tried it on Saturday. He missed it, but he gets it tonight. Uh, he's looking for a shot right here. I think he makes up his mind long before he gets in the act of shooting that I am taking this to the hole, and it worked that time. And there is the foul as Buck Williams doesn't get out to cut off Hornacek. 2.22 left in overtime, and we're still tied up. Off the floor before they put the ball in play. And he is still there. <laughs> he just gives up. A wicked kick by Chambers. Hornacek finds some daylight inside. Sabalos the reverse. Now they understand right now Hornacek has gotten his offense. He has some confidence. So now they have to run at him. Well, I like the way Sabalas finds the opening around the basket. He has been there all night. Inside of two. The Drexler. The body put on him, and the shot won't go down. Hornacek had it. He tipped to Sabalos, who is laying out of bounds. Cedric Sabalos. Out of Cal State Fullerton. And this is going to be their form. Look at all the shirts around the ball. Ainge is not going to get there to block it. Percy makes a good effort. 149 left. Porter. Sabala switches on him. Johnson having to guard Percy. They have to take advantage of that, and they do. Yes. Tied again. 136 apiece. Johnson, some daylight to Marley. The reverse will go. Tip, Williams to Hornacek. Hornacek on Kersey. Takes him off the dribble, nice. goes inside. The running right hand and will go. He had it. The ball's loose on the floor. Everybody gets into the act. We're going to jump it up. What hustle on the part of both Phoenix and Portland. Oh, that's nice. I, I think you can tell by that play how important this game is. This is a scrub. <laughs> Hornacek, when he's on top of his game, you can just write that one down. He gets that close. But watch Chambers goes down. All the bodies on the floor after this loose ball. And no question that this is a jump ball. There was a controversial play down the stretch in game one. Cotton thought his team got a ball taken away from him on a play similar to that. Not tonight. Timeout by Portland. Tied at 136. We'll be back. tip as Chambers steps in, I think, against Percy. And then you're right, execution is going to be the key down the stretch. Portland has it. Porter gets down. Porter gets away from Kevin Johnson, who has to reach up from behind, and he commits his fourth personal foul. Well, that's not a bad foul. That's on KJ. Almost made a good defensive play by knocking it away initially, then had to recover very quickly to keep Porter from making that shot. Porter will be at the line. He is 8 of 9. He'll shoot a pair. Has 29 points for the ball game. The last time Portland went to the free throw line, they got the long rebound over the head of Tom Chambers. You can't afford to make mistakes like that. So you have to put a body on, for, on the uh, Portland Trailblazers on the second shot. Jack, we talked about at the beginning of the game how Portland was not a good free throw shooting team, and that comes up to haunt you. The huddle by Portland coaching. Porter, though, is one that has shot well. 92% in this series. One point, Portland lead. We are nearing the one minute mark of overtime. In 
inside of a minute. Johnson pushes down Buck Williams, and that'll be his sixth personal foul. See, Buck is just not getting out high enough over top of that screen to cut Kevin Johnson off. Look, you're allowing him to turn the corner here before the contact is made. So instead of stepping out and forcing him to charge, he's giving him that corner and picking up the, the foul. Each team, two players fouling out. Lang and Perry already down for Phoenix. And it is Williams and Robinson. If you want to relive this excitement, Fred Hickman will have the highlights coming your way next inside the NBA. And Doc Rivers will have his thoughts on what probably will go down as a great playoff basketball game in the 1992 NBA playoffs. You're seeing everything tonight. Duckworth has been sitting a long time. See, Buck Williams has fouled out. Phoenix, when they get the ball, I would penetrate towards Duckworth to try to force him to move, try to force him to play defense. Also force him to pick up a six-person foul. Now Mark West comes in in a defensive mood, move, and Chambers will sit down. 14 assists for Kevin Johnson tonight. a one-point Phoenix lead. Eight. Drexler on Marley. He spins. Not good double team. Ames for three. Doesn't get it. The rebound control. Drexler to Ames to 20. Count it. Danny Ames from play Drexler. Phoenix wants a 20-second timeout. Portland has taken, they won a full timeout now, they say, with 34.2. The Blazers have taken a one-point lead over the Phoenix Suns. Danny Ainge came into the playoffs averaging eight points a contest. Tonight, he has four threes and this big two. Well, the double team came to cut off Drexler's opportunity to get to the basket. Ainge well behind the three-point line, misses there, but watch how he spots up. Boy, the offensive forward work has been... A real problem for Phoenix here in this fourth period. Reaction by the Portland bench. Danny Ainge's 23rd point puts Portland up by one. But this seems like the same situation we were in at the regulation that Phoenix has once again a chance to go for a two for one. With the Gorilla patting me off. I appreciate that. I definitely need it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thank you. There you go. Like uh, what we have to put up with. I'm telling Where are you. our security guards? I've been calling for them here all night. Portland with three offensive rebounds in the overtime period. They had only two in regulation. Now, Phoenix, they still have a lot of time remaining, Jack. Do you want to work the clock down? Do you want to go for the two for one since it is you're at an odd number here? Well, I think the reason why Cotton changed from a 20-second timeout to a full timeout is because it gives this team a chance to take the ball out in the front court. So I, I think he is trying to conserve some time. I think he wants to get two for one, and they'll bring the ball up into the front court to get the quickest shot available. The final 34.2 of overtime. We were tied at 127 apiece at the end of regulation. Once again, Portland in foul trouble is still playing with five fouls. Percy and Duckworth. Porter has four. The only foul trouble right now for Phoenix Chambers with five, and he is back into the ball game. West sits back down. You know, the real problem, as I see it for Portland right now, is getting the ball inbound to the person they want to get it to. They've had a hard time bringing it in the half court. And see, they're going to struggle right here again, and he's going to have to use the timeout. And now they will take the 20. Spacing was terrible on that inbounds pass. Well, if you look at the uh, at the position on the floor, all five guys were on the strong side half of the court. Nobody on the weak side. That imaginary line that stretches in the middle of the court, all five white shirts were over there. That's just too close together. Johnson all the way inside. Doesn't get it controlled. Oh by Portland and we're going to have a foul and there is a 5.3 5.5 difference in the shot in the game so even if he makes two you still have a chance but Chambers has fouled out of the ball game uh, K KJ wanted to foul right here we'll see if Trexler gets it 
Pretty good defensive play. Doesn't look like it from that angle. And there is the foul. Tom Chambers fouling out with 29 points. Number 29, Jerome Percy is alone. And Let's I see who you, Cotton goes I guess in. you come with Ed Neely. Yeah, I mean, he, he gets a three. He has played a little bit in this game. Number 39, Ed Neely. Well, at the line, it will be Kersey. He is only two of four so far, and he's 68% in this series. And that is also his percentage for the playoffs. Once again, the offensive rebound. You don't want to give it up in this situation. Chip Kersey miss. There are a lot of names still walking the line. Kersey and Duckworth, we've already lost five. And Kersey will have his second. Kevin Johnson telling the crowd to be loud. Here we go. You have to get a body on people and don't forget about the shooter. Sid Kersey missed. Makes the second. Two-point game. And they moved Chuck. Drexler over on KJ to make it a little more difficult for him to get his shots off. Still time left. Marley, shot clock at 13. Hornacek gets a good look. Has it stripped. Portland has the basketball to Porter. Kevin Johnson has to wrap him up with 8.4 seconds. And once again, it is the Portland defense. We saw it in game one. What a defensive play again. Hornacek not really complaining. I thought he got stripped right here, maybe got hit across, but just Drexler once again that makes a good defensive play. All ball on the replay, and then he gets it up the floor. Always pursuing the offensive opportunity. KJ with the foul. 9 of 11 for Porter. He can ice this one. It is still in doubt. Even if he makes it, a three will tie. Already with threes tonight, Hornacek and Marley each have one. Portland shooting 70.6% as a team from the free throw line coming into this game throughout the series. And he misses them both. Phoenix has the basketball, and they call a timeout. My goodness gracious. <laughs> Portland in oh. overtime, three of eight from the line. Let's look at it again. Boy, can you believe this? <laughs> I mean, a guy shooting 92% in this series. Boy, and Phoenix almost gave up the offensive rebound again. I think everyone's surprised that Porter missed them both. Nearly with the body on Kirsten. Ames took a swipe at it. Sabalos had it, Kevin Johnson had it, and Big Ed Neely. Not exactly a 43-inch vertical, but he does get the 32-year-old body up. Uh, that just shows you that fundamentals went out a lot of time over better athleticism. We may have another overtime period coming your way, but when we finally wrap it up here in the Valley of the Sun, Fred and Doc will be with you with Inside the NBA, Inside the Phoenix Tunnel. The players physically and emotionally drained in a game that has featured great shots, a lot of fouls, tons of free throws, and in overtime, that's right, in an overtime, the Blazers could have wrapped this thing up a while back. And Jeff Kersey, Greg Willard, and Hugh Hollins also meeting as the teams do. I still think it's important for Phoenix to get the ball to KJ. I mean, he is the guy that can get to the basket, get stuff off of penetration. Portland has gone with Drexler on Kevin Johnson in an attempt to make it even more difficult for him to get his shots off. I think the officials are discussing Portland uh, committing the foul as Phoenix takes the ball to the basket. There have been a couple close plays and no call made. I think they will blow the whistle this time if it is close. Well, the timeout situation is bleak at best for Phoenix. They do not have any. Blazers have two. Now you would think that Phoenix would go for the tie. You usually go for the tie at home. You go yes. for the win on the road. But 
Once again, in that same spot, we've seen it a couple of times. Marley bringing it in. Phoenix has had a great deal of trouble bringing it in from there. And they don't have a timeout. So the first matter at hand would be get it in somebody's hands. Here we go. Now, Ainge is going to play a rover position. He is going to take the guy that breaks it out to the ball. And they do get it to KJ this time. This is it. Six seconds left. KJ the pull-up jumper. It goes! say we talked about this has been a game of big shots big plays none bigger than that although we still have 2.7 left let's look at it that's why i like him to have him that's the first time he's been able to break out uncontested drexler lets him get ahead of steam up here does a good job of cutting him off but he's able to shoot over drexler i've seen it look prettier as it's left his hand i've seen better form on the shot i've seen better rotation but the results what count? Good job in the truck. And our guys on the floor who had cameras on their shoulder for a better part of three hours now. Here it is with the clock. No question what he wanted to do. Oh, yes. Uh, that's why I like him to have it. He stops, he pops, and we're tied. 140 apiece, 2.7 left to be played. Portland missing the crucial free throws in overtime. Kevin Johnson with 35 points, matching his playoff high, which he had in game two. But unlike game two, he's also had assists in this ball game. Yeah, that's, that's the key right there. He's been able to keep other people involved. Now, you know that Portland will want to get the ball to fly Drexler. I would play Drexler just as the Portland Trailblazers have played Kevin Johnson until that last play. I would face, face guard Drexler. I would face guard Porter and force someone else to handle the ball. I would go out of my way. I would do everything possible to make sure neither of those two guys catch the ball. No fouls to give. 2.7 left. They'll bring it out right in front of us. KJ, nine points in overtime. Nine of the 13, and West comes in. Neely sits down. Bill is joined by Johnson, Hornacek, and Marley. It is Duckworth, Ainge, Kersey, Drexler. Here we go. Let's switch on Drexler. They lose the ball. He has a chance to win it. The shot at the buzzer in won't go. We've got another overtime. Oh, boy. Oh, you got to love the game. Well, they played Drexler perfectly that time. Sabalas with the switch out. The double team came from the weak side, and Phoenix forced the turnover. Who will blink first? Portland will work on free throws tomorrow because it put them in a situation they needed this. Uh, see, uh, Sabalas switched out, and there comes the help from the weak side. And now Sabalas might have gotten just a little bit tight on this when it came up real close. But you have to give him a lot of credit for making the play. Now, that's what he's thinking as he walks back to the huddle. We'll go to our second OT. We're tied at 140. And the first overtime, Portland has it. They jumped out early by four. Only to have Phoenix come back. Inside, the no look pass, but we do have a KJ. Whistle. Is that maybe KJ? Maybe number six on KJ. I think it is. That'll be Kevin Johnson. He has fouled out of the ball game. Oh, listen to how quiet this crowd has just gotten. Now, young Steve Burt. Let's see if he comes in. The pressure will be on him. Is he leaving 35 points and 14 assists. Now there's 15 Steve Burt. Oh, you're talking about it? Boom, it happened. A guy started out the season in the CBA. Here he is in a double overtime game with all the pressure on his back. Porter, the running 15, dumps it off. Duckworth pulls three. his way. Three, maybe. That'll be three, three seconds in the lane. Three. We'll go the other way. Has to be the first time we've seen that call it in the playoffs, huh? And Duckworth cannot argue because he has a technical foul already called up. Without Kevin Johnson, without Tom Chambers, their two leading scorers in the ballgame. 
Burt to the hole. Doesn't get it. Drexler, Hornacek tries to pick him up. Burt on the double team. Shot clock at 10. Inside of Duckworth on West. Really battling inside. And Kevin Duckworth with a baby hook. A big basket there by Duckworth. He sat a long time in the second half. Caught on in the, in the, in the overtime period. His first field goal in the second half and in overtime. Marley, a dangerous yes. pass. Shot clock at 7. Kersey on Hornacek. The running run-handed jumper goes for Jeff Hornacek. Well, this is Hornacek's time right here. He has to step up. He has to. The only scores really on the floor right now for Phoenix are Marley and Hornacek. And you might want to throw Sabalos in there, but that's probably stretching it. Well, around the basket, he's as good as almost right. anyone at that small forward position. He's not real good at creating shots for himself. Gary Porter comes up short on the jumper. This is when the legs start giving out. And rebound. Kersey to Ames, fakes the three, goes with the two, that bank is open. Oh, I'll tell you what, for Budweiser right now, Danny Ames is pretty much at the top of the list for yes, Portland. I think so. Inside, West hands it off to Sabalos for the two. Now that's what I'm talking about right there. Around the basket, Sabalos is going to be able to score for you. We have a new playoff scoring record. We are at 288 already and counting. Marley chasing Drexler. Back down. Duckworth to spin. The left-handed hook goes down. Oh, and they're going to him right now. And of course, he is the guy on the floor for Portland. That should be the strongest right now. He has played the fewest minutes of either of those guys. So you might see them go to him right now. He and West for, for Phoenix. Hornacek stops, pops, in and out. Ball loose, Portland comes up with it. They lead it by two, nearing the two minute mark of our second overtime period. And I would go to Duckworth again. I would try to get as much out of him as possible since he is thinking offense right now. Well, West doesn't want him to get down real low, but Drexler instead takes it up, no basket. That will be a foul on Clyde Drexler. Sabalas with the big defensive play. That's his third. The judge. Uh, I think the bump came outside. There's a bump right there by Marley, a hand in the back, but definitely Clyde runs over Sabalas. One more look. Now there's the push right there from behind. A good defense that time by Sabalas. Here's Burt to Hornacek. He's taking control. The running right hander won't go, but they tip it out to Marley. Hornacek for three. just love the way some guys just step up and say, guys, this is my game. I mean, I want this ball. The coach's son, a former walk-on at Iowa State. Inside, Kersey, the big shot won't go, but we have a foul. Mark West picks up the whistle, only his first. Jeff Hornacek, look where the arc was, and then took it. I mean, he knows he has to score the points. I mean, he knows he has to be the guy, and he's looking to do that right now. Percy only three of six from the line. That looks short. He has missed three of his last four. We talked about Portland in overtime. Terrible from the line. Three of nine so far in the OTs. Oh, but look what he's looking into under the basket. That looks better. Oh, he doesn't let it go. Boy, we mentioned it at the top. <laughs> Coaches just shoot themselves over stuff like that. Now Duckworth on board a sec. Drexler picks him back up. Inside.
words, Jack. My voice is giving hot. I tell you what, I just want to look at him. I mean, this is great. Sabalas around the basket. I mentioned he is as good as any at that small forward position at finding the open position, moving without the ball, snaking around there along the baseline to get open opportunities. I mean, that's been him this whole game. Hey, the only person that's smart is the gorilla with the oxygen mask on. <laughs> what if he has enough for us? In case you just joined us or have been fast asleep and you just woke up, we were tied at 127 at the end of regulation. We were tied at 140 at the end of overtime one. And in overtime number two, the Suns have gone up by three thanks to a big three-pointer by Jeff Hornacek. A good look inside by Steve Burt to Cedric Sabalos, who gets the two. For Portland, the story has been missed free throws. Clyde Drexler basically shut down in the fourth quarter, as was Terry Porter. But in overtime, they are just three of ten from the charity strike, and that has been the major difference thus far. Kevin Johnson has fouled out. Tom Chambers has fouled out. And Hornacek and Marley have got to step up. 295 total points scored in this game. A playoff record high. Eclipsing the old high of 285. That was set back in April of 83 with San Antonio and Denver. The Knicks and the Bulls tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. <laughs> They're going to have to have a wild one yeah, to top this. It's going to be tough to top this one. And Jazz and Sonics immediately following. What a fabulous game. And hats off to both teams tonight. Uh, two things you don't want to have happen right here. You don't want the uncontested three-point shot, say, by Ainge or Porter. You also don't want to foul a guy in the act of shooting going to the basket. Although the stakes aren't quite as high, it's going to bring some of us back to the 76 finals in Boston and Phoenix. The overtime game where they just went at each other. Good job, Hornacek, not allowing the three by him. West on Drexler, he'll take him to the hole. Drexler, the acrobatic shot won't go down, but Clyde Drexler goes to the line. Drexler finally got the whistle. He has been wanting it. He's been talking to the officials about how he's getting bucked going to the basket. And West picks up the personal. Foul is on West, his second. Drexler, six of nine from the line. And Drexler really, over the course of the playoffs, hasn't been all that effective. 75% from the free throw line. He steps up and makes that one look easy. We are... 102 mark of the second OT, a two-point Phoenix lead. Drexler with another. Bodies flying everywhere. A one-point game, and we are inside of one minute again. Portland needing a stop, Phoenix needing a bucket. Hornacek. The stop, the pop, doesn't get it. Rebound, Duckworth. Drexler had the back of West. I had a handful of Jersey Tiffany. In the penalty, foul number 23, Cedric Sabalos. And Sabalos picks up the foul, his third. But boy, I tell you what, Mark West, somebody had a handful of his Drexler. jersey. It's Drexler, and he's walking up the floor talking to Hugh Hollins that time. Now watch Drexler with West in the back, right there. Or Derek, I mean, all, all sure. <laughs> officials have not had any substitutes this game. They've had to play the entire game. Duckworth at the line. Three of three. He's only 69% in this series. 55% for the playoffs. He'll have another. We are tied. Have to keep talking offensive rebounds on the free throw. Gets them both. A one-point game. Phoenix needs a timeout. 43.6 left. My heart is still pounding. We'll be back.
playoffs on TNT. With the series tied, do the Knicks have the Bulls worried? But of course! First, it's back to Chicago, then on to Seattle for the Jazz and Sonics. Playoff pressure continues tomorrow at 8 Eastern on TNT. Tonight, TNT alters it all the way. Portland with two timeouts remaining. Burt looks for Sabalos. He's posting up Percy underneath. Marley takes age to the hole. The glass is over. And another timeout. Dan Marley with the big hoop. It is a one-point game. A 3.3 difference between the shot and the game clock. And the officials are dragging just a little bit. Well, big shots made in this game. Marley takes it up. And Ames. Watch right here. Great concentration. Kevin Johnson sitting on the bench with Miguel Knight. The reaction. He was a little more excited than that after the shot went down. Dan Marley with the two, and the Suns have two timeouts. Blazers only one, but they will have the basketball, and there will be a 3.3 difference between the shot and the game clock. Now, that said, the Blazers had three fouls to give. They actually had two before the right. Suns get into the active shooting, now getting to the penalty situation. They have one, and... But we are under two minutes in the overtime period, so the second one will lead the free throw. Cotton Fitzsimmons, this would have to rank up probably with one of the all-time great games he has ever been a part of. Among his 800 plus 100 free throws. Here we go, again. Drexler baseline, inside, reverse, it doesn't go. Tip to Duckworth, his right-handed shot, it doesn't go, we have a foul. I think West got Duckworth in the act of shooting. That'll be Mark West, his third. We'll look to two things as Drexler gets to the basket for the team, one each for the team that loses this game. Of course, would Portland have been the free throw shooting, or lack thereof, for Phoenix, their inability to get to the boards and limit Portland down the stretch to only one shot. Nice job, Duckler. Five of five from the strike. We are tied. 10.7 left. That is a not too bad. The Blazers, however, misses have been possible. Here we go again. A one-point lead. Cotton Fitzsimmons will use one of his two timeouts remaining. 10.7 left. Phoenix has the basketball, but they trail by one. To Burke. Hang on, folks. Here we go. The shot. It's in and out. No good. We've got a whistle and a foul, and it may be a Portland victory. Cotton Fitzsimmons wanted a foul on the rebound. Steve Burt had a good look at it. Terry Porter can make it a three-point game, but it's not over yet. Well, you'll see Marley start to slow up right now. He'll want to come back out and get it. You see him at the screen over there. Burt went the other way, though. Now, this is a good shot. I mean, a guy that has not had many in this situation. This is first playoff experience, but I think they wanted to follow Drexler over the back of Hornets. I think so. And he may have a complaint. Uh, Drexler over the back that time got away with one. Uh, I just can't see Porter stepping up there and missing these two. I mean, he did it in regulation. A two-point game. Still 3.6 left. Phoenix with one timeout. We'll call the timeout. We'll use it right here. Make or miss. He missed it. Tip will go in timeout. 1.3 went off the clock. So we have 2.3 left. A two will tie it. A three will win it. Phoenix is out of timeouts. And now, once again, they've got to get the ball in at half court. We've seen them have problems. In the last two possessions, they've gotten it in 
in pretty good shape. Um, I think, once again, you'll want to get the ball. I, I want Hornacek to get it one way or the other, or Marlin. But once again, Portland will do their job of making sure those two guys don't touch it. They've done a great job in this situation throughout the playoffs uh, and, and in this series, keeping the ball away from KJ at times, keeping it away from Marley on the last play, and then Hornacek has not been around. There's the key. One foul to give. Yes, and they will use it. They will use it. I mean, that, that is a big, big key for the Portland Trailblazers and something Rick Adelman is telling his troops right now. But hats off to Jess Kersey, Greg Willard and Hugh Holland, who have gone better than 58 minutes in this game. 127 all at the end of regulation, 140 all at the end of overtime. Number two, Chambers and Johnson have both fouled out the two big guns among many. Phoenix, you get the ball in, you want to get a good look. With 2.4, you should get a good look. Well, you have to take about a second away because uh, Portland will use that foul, I'm right. sure. So they will use a second there. Cotton has to be drawn up two plays over there in the, in the event that that is what happens. But I, I still think Marley has to handle the ball, try to get something off the dribble, or Jeff Hornacek. If Marley takes the ball out of bounds, that's going to take him out of the play. Steve Burton, if he gets another look at the basket like he got before, I have confidence <laughs> that he'll make that shot. We may be going to overtime number three. 2.4 seconds will decide it. Marley for the win. Oh, he doesn't get it. Portland goes up three games to one. The final in double overtime, 153. 151, and that was the design play, yeah. obviously, to get the ball over to Dan Marley, who takes to take that three-point play from outside. Uh, he had a great look. He had a great look at the shot. I mean, Marley, it was a play that worked to perfection. Exactly right. He had a chance. I'm just surprised Portland didn't have didn't commit the foul. I'm just surprised they weren't closer to him. Well, that's a great look at the basket. He had a look. It just hits the back of the iron about four or five inches off. But Portland goes up three games to one. They'll head to Portland for game five on Thursday. 153, 151, double overtime. And one of the big keys, Jack, in that overtime period, I think, on a good side was the free throw shooting of Kevin Dunn. Terry Porter, when you stepped up to the line, you knocked him down. No pressure, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a little pressure, but I tell you, I was very shocked to see Terry missing free throws. But the great thing about it is that I finally was able to step up for the team when they needed me down the stretch and pull through for them with the free throws and a couple of hook shots. Terry, it's no secret you have been under some uh, scrutiny in Portland. Uh, people wanting more, wanting more, wanting you to do more. I thought the night, though, after sitting a long time in the second half, you were called on to come in the overtime period. You made some big plays, not only from the free throw line, but you made a couple big turnaround hooks also. Yeah, it, it was great. I, I can get that to is the Lord, you know. The Lord gave me the strength to come on out there and decide a little disappointed I was in the first half, a little upset at the referees, the way it was going, and still come through for the team. I'm just thankful. Well, Kevin, you had eight points in the second overtime period. What does this mean for the team? Because your team has been said everything that these guys fold when the pressure is on the last couple of minutes of a game. What does this do for your team overall? I tell you, it shows us that we have a lot of talent, tremendous, a lot of heart, a lot of hustle, and it shows that we're going home. All right, Kevin Duckworth, you, you guys take <laughs> the game. lead. Great Three game. games to one. Game five, of course, will be Thursday night in Portland. Ernie Johnson is still in our studios in Atlanta. Ernie, this has got to go down as one of the all-time great great games in TNT play 11. James Carter with the drive and the Michael Jordan-like spin move that doesn't follow. Rebound out quickly to Pippen. Barkley. Run down by Carter. I'm sure